Here we go. Online viewers, do you have your tickets? That was cruel, wasn't it? Okay. Eight nine. Uh, eight, eight, nine, six, six, seven, one. Mm. Hey, winner, winner. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Christy will take care of you. Christy, whose baby's that? Is that Anastasia? Where is Sonia Taylor? Maybe the front row chatty Cathy's could go get Sonia Taylor. Okay, next, 896-732, 896-732, I know you're here, we just gave these out this morning. Can you hear me in the coffee shop? 896-732 is the ticket number. I'll wait five, four, three, two, one, but I will put you back in the bucket in case you're in the potty. Eight nine six five eight five. Yay! Congratulations. Oh, there, Sonia. Hey there. I need you to keep your brother in line. He will not zip it. Church started like five minutes ago, and he's just over there having coffee, talking to your friend. All right, next. It's very rude. She's she's telling mom. Ha! Eight nine six six five two. Did I do that a while ago? Eight nine six. I guess not. Eight nine six six five two. Congratulations! Woohoo! Oh, we got the muscle. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Either side you can pick from. And if, it's, and if it is like a basket or a bag or something like that, there's always something in there. 896-653. That's you, front row. Woo! All righty. Isn't this fun? Who wants to win? If you don't celebrate when someone else wins, you'll never win. That's right. 896-620. Eight nine six six two zero. Yeah, there we go. All right, all right. Five, five more to go. Good for her. See? Oh my goodness! Did you get one of those hundred dollars last night? Five dollars. It all it all just turns into more. Eight nine six six four three. Eight nine six six four three. Back here? Woohoo! I love giving away things. Even though I'm like it's not like I bought them for you. 896596. All right, one in the middle. I'm hurrying, Josh. Where did he go? Oh, you done talking now? Okay. 896743. 743. 743. Don't you come up here with a fake ticket. 896743. Probably in the putty. Is that you? No. Okay. I'll put it back in there. 896646. Does that mean that I outlived the music and you had to start it again? Sorry, Nick. All right, yes. Okay, we got two more. This is time. If you, you better pray. <laughs> eight nine six six eight four. I have been stirring it every time I put my fat hand in there. Eight nine six six eight four. Hey, look at there. Look at there. You can come on this side too. Don't be, don't be manipulated by having to get the gift from the side that you live on. Just somebody could be taking it. Last number, 896-552. Is that a person? Who? Is that her? Who is it? 552? Brenda, sister! Yay! Brenda paid me. 
Because she wanted you to have to come up front. Yay. All right. That's my 10 gift giving this morning. How exciting. Don't worry. You know we'll be doing this all day. You know we will. So I just want to pray a blessing over this morning's um, conference, if you guys don't mind. Um, you can look at your schedules. I'm not going to take time to go over the schedule because let's be honest, last night's schedule didn't matter at all. So like my husband was doing the words on the screen and he's like, they did one song that was on the list. I was like, I know the Holy Spirit had a plan. Don't worry about it. You did fine. It was fine. But anyway, let's just take a moment after these guys come up. It's fine. Where's your brother? Oh, talking to Pastor right there in the front. Yep, I see. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. Oh, I love you so much. Here, pull my ticket. Okay. Thanks. She just gave me a little fiver. Um, anyway, everybody stand. Put your tickets away. And let's just lift our hearts to the Lord, okay? God, we thank you for this beautiful morning and that that sloppy rain has stopped. And we thank you for these beautiful women and men, Father. God, I pray blessings over this day. I carry on and agree with the blessing that Pastor gave us last night. Father, may you fall into this place. Let your anointing fall, God. Let it be tangible. Let it rest on every single person. We speak next into these women. We speak faith. We speak freedom. We bind fear. We bind anxiety. And God, we want to crawl up in your lap. We want, to, we want to be so close that we can feel your breath. God, just please. I, we, we, we open our arms to you, God. And we say we give all of us to all of you. And we worship you, and we praise you, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. about anybody else but when I went back to my hotel room last night I still felt the effects of our service that he's so good yeah. don't matter how hard of a day we've had how long it was he's still good yeah. no matter the struggle no matter the battle he's still good Just worship with us this morning. I love you, Lord. Your mercy never changes. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. <laughs> you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as my father. I've known you as my friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, and all my life you have been 
Zaga. Come on, lift your voice and sing, How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, How great is our God. And oh, we'll see how name above and he's the name above oh, worthy of our praise worthy of our praise and my heart will sing how great is our God come on sing he's the name He's the name of all oh, worthy of our praise, worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. Ooh, how great, how great. the name he's the name above all he's worthy of all praise and my heart will sing and my heart will sing how great is our God come on you sing this then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. How Lord, 
you just keep on getting better and better? Huh. You keep on getting better. 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 Oh, you keep on getting better. You keep on getting better. Keep on getting better, you keep on getting better, oh, you keep on getting better, 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 oh. great, my God. You're so great. So great. We acknowledge who you are, Lord. We acknowledge what you've done, Father. We give you praise. Lord, we push past the songs, we push past the hymns. We sing and release those spiritual songs out of our heart to you, Lord. We love you, Lord. I magnify your sweet name. In the morning I say you are good. In the evening I say you are good. You are good to me. Come on, sing that again. Say you are good. You are good. In the morning I say you are good in the evening i'll say you are good you are good to me you are good to me so good you are good So good to me. So good. You're so Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Rest on us this morning, Jesus. Come on and say, Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. 
Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart down. When you're in the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart down. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Oh. Lord, your word says if we hunger and thirst, you would fill us. You will fill us, Lord. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us, come rest on us, come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. You will fill me. Lord, this is our prayer. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we have.
need you all day long I need you in the evening I need you Lord nobody does me like you do nobody can hold me like you do I love it when you hold me in your arms Jesus I love it when I can sit back in your arms sweet Jesus and know that you hold me and know that you're whispering to me I know this is a ladies' conference, and I know I'm the pastor of the church, but I still ask my wife for permission to come up here this morning because I don't want to do anything that would break the anointing or distract from what the Lord is wanting to do this morning. But there's three areas that the Lord dealt with me about, and I'm, I'm, I, I just tried to say, no, 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 I don't want to do this. It's, 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 and I'm not trying to show off, but anytime you have this many people here, and the Lord says he wants to heal people of migraine headaches, the natural person said, well, of course, with this many people, there's going to be some migraine headaches. But you know what? I don't care if there's one or a hundred. The Lord wants to heal. He wants to heal. And those of you this morning that are struggling with migraine headache, we're going to pray with you. I'm not going to call you to the front, but I will ask you to raise your hand because there's some believing women standing around you today. And we want you to just lay your hands on that person that's got their hands up. So I see a bunch of hands already going up. So uh, those of you that are suffering with a migraine headache right now, we're going to pray and we're going to believe God for complete deliverance. Find somebody that's got their hands up. Here's some more over here. One, two, three, over here, four. Somebody, don't let them stand by themselves. Somebody get next to them and pray for them. I feel like God really wants to show himself strong in your behalf. Lay your hands on him. Begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over that spirit of infirmity, that migraine spirit in the name of Jesus. You have no right. These bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and you have no right to invade and trespass upon God's property. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing. No more, no more, no more. After this weekend, there will be no more in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over you this morning. I prophesy healing and no more migraine headaches. It's over. You're going you're gonna to write us. And you're going to call back. You're going to be on Facebook. You're going to say, I've been healed. I've been healed. To God be the glory. 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 Hallelujah. Receive. Receive. I'm telling you, God would not interrupt this service. And I would not come up here had we not known that God's going to do something. There's an anointing flowing in this house. Be healed. Be healed. You stinking migraine headaches, you get out of this place. You get out of these temples. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Receive it, sister. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Receive, receive, receive. Hallelujah. 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 The second area that the second area that the Lord did with me about was marriages. 
Some marriages are struggling. Some of you women came in here brokenhearted. You came into this place uh, not really sure about how much longer your marriage is going to be able to stay together. God wants to heal. He wants to restore. He wants to put it back better than it was before. And if you'll just lift, I, I'm, I'm not even going to ask you to lift your hands because we don't want to. We don't want to expose anybody that's, that's having these kind of situations. But we're going to pray for you right now because I do, I do know by the Spirit of God that there's people in here that are struggling in their marriage relationship, and God wants to heal. He wants to put it back together, and God's going to use you, ladies. He's going to use you to get that marriage healed and strong and back together. So you don't even need to raise your hand, but we're going to pray. Would you all pray with me this, week, this morning? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we see how the enemy is trying to divide families. We see how that enemy has come in to bring separation, even divorce. But in the name of Jesus, we forbid it. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for healing and re full restoration in every marriage, every home, every household in the name of Jesus. Husbands and wives coming together, falling in love again. They are even better than the day they were proposed to. Even better than the day they walked down the aisle. God, it's going to be a fresh, a fresh love, a, few, a fresh anointed love from heaven that's going to come. God, and I thank you for putting these homes back together. Thank you that children, 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 children. children. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the good reports. God, you're healing and restoring marriages. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Somebody would say, well, I, you know, in this big of a crowd, there's always going to be somebody with a broken marriage. That's okay. Somebody can go home with a healed marriage today, right? Amen. Amen. Somebody can go home healed of a migraine headache. Okay, one more area. One more. Are you healed? Is it gone? Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's gone. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. We give Jesus all the praise. One more area, and, I, and then I'm going to shut up, get out of the way, and let these guys go. Thank you so much for leading us into worship. You know, the church has forgotten about the art of worship because we're so time conscious. We want we want to get in, get out, and get on with our with our journey. But listen, this worship that is God is trying to teach us how to rest in His presence and not be so time conscious, and let Him let Him come in, touch you. Uh, tremendous financial needs. I'm not just talking about, well, I, I don't have enough money to go to Disneyland or I don't have enough to go to Brent. I'm talking about some, some dire needs that you've been wrestling with in yeah. your finances. And I want to pray with you this morning that God's going to, first of all, I want to tell you, first of all, you need to be a tither. If you're robbing from God, don't expect God to bless you. Is that too strong, Bishop? Okay. If you're not tithing, how in the world can you expect God to bless you? If you're not giving, how can you expect God to give something back to you? So it starts with us. We're the sowers. Amen? Am I right, Brother Massey? We sow, and then God multiplies it back to us. But I'll tell you something. A hundred times zero is still a zero, right? So I'm going to pray for some of you today. That, and I'm not going to call you out, but I know you're having some extreme financial problems. And the first thing I'm going to encourage you to do is you get back to your home church and you support that local church. You tithe. I don't care if all you have is, is, uh, you know, is a dollar. And, and that first dime out of every dollar belongs to God. Somebody say, oh, that's old school. No, that's Bible school. Father, in the name of... Come on, just lift your hands. Everybody all over the building. In the name of Jesus, God, I just release... Yeah. God, upon those that are obeying you in the tithe and offering, offering yeah. principle, that you are going to open the windows of heaven according to your word. And God, I don't want to hear that's Old Testament. I don't want to hear that's not for us. God, I thank you that you, your word is forever settled in heaven. And we declare that the windows of heaven are opening up yeah. and you're pouring out a blessing even greater than we can contain it. And God, it just overflows. Our cup runs over. According to Psalms 23, God, my cup runneth over and I'm able to give and bless others ministries able to give and bless other people God I can give to humanitarian aid and efforts and God I just thank you that our cup is running over because we're honoring you Lord we're honoring you in this house today we honor you with our giving we honor you with a tithe Lord that's your money that's your time that's that's not even mine to give I'm just returning it to you Lord and God as a result 
I thank you for the wonderful testimonies that's going to come forth of how, how that you how that you supply not only all of our needs, but you're granting the yes. desires of our heart, God. You're, we're seeing an overabundance, Lord. God, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of work to do in this last day revival, and we can't do it on a dollar ninety-eight. And I believe God that these people are going to overflow with such tremendous financial blessings. Yeah. God, that they'll be able to fund orphanages, they'll be able to fund uh, homes for for uh, 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 older people. God, they'll be able to fund. God, all these needs, Lord, that are around the world today. So thank you that the body of Christ is rising up in supernatural financial increase in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Sorry, guys. No, I'm not. Have fun. There was something on my heart, too. Um, there seems to be an epidemic within the church of women that struggle with infertility. It seems like the world is trying to keep godly women from being able to have children. And I see it in our church. And I would like to pray for you. It's something that I've gone through in my own life. And I want to be able to speak the word of Jesus over you. If there's anyone here, whether it's your first time trying to have a baby, secondary infertility, anything like that, um, if we could, even if it's just for me, we're, we're believing God for another baby. And I have found in my life, when I'm in need of something, the best way for me to get it is to pour out into others. I'm believing for me and I'm believing for you because faith can move mountains. Faith can turn graves into gardens. And I want the family of God to multiply. Um, so if that's you or if you, ha if you know someone that's struggling right now to be able, to, if you want to stand um, in their place if they're not here today, we're going to pray, okay? You, anyone with me? Okay. Lord, we thank you for making a way for godly families to have new life. Lord, I thank you that you are making a way where the doctors say it's impossible. Nothing is above the word of God. And I thank you, God, that you are making a way for them to be able to pour out that love into the next generation. Lord, we are praying for the next generation to come up within the church, Lord God. I thank you for making a way. Lord, we speak against the name of infertility. You are not above the name of God. I thank you for testimonies to come within the next year of new babies born into the family of God. Thank you, Lord, that there will be testimonies in 2024 of pregnancies and new babies born. Healthy babies, beautiful, healthy babies, healthy families, healthy mommies. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because it's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing. It's coming our way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to. Come on, sing it one more time. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. Coming my way, it's coming my way. The season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me.
Pretty blessed in this house. Hey, we're just getting started on today. Yeah. Just getting started, soaking in the presence of God. I believe that he'll meet everyone of us right where we're at. If we're leaning in, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, Josh, that anointing that's on your life, don't go away yet, tender heart, just a moment, just the anointing that's on your life from last year to this year has so increased. What a psalmist. And I know sometimes you wonder, God, how are you going to open the doors that I... But I want to encourage you, son in the Lord, that when he starts swinging wide the doors, everything that is happening in your life, he's preparing you for the next. And he will take you exactly where you need to be because the purpose and plan he's got for you is to lead people into the presence of God. Into the presence of God. You're not supposed to be like anybody else. You're supposed to be who God has called you to be. And I love the fact that you know how to worship God, but it's only going to increase, Josh. And the doors are going to swing wide. But until then, you just keep doing what you're doing because the devil could not silence your voice. He could not take you out. He tried, but he didn't win. And he knows that you are a threat to the kingdom of God. So every circumstance that you're up against, just know that that is working for your good into the next. And when the door swings wide, and you're going to know, there may be some doors swing wide before the one that you're supposed to take. But God's going to lead you into your next. Amen. Amen. And the thing that I wanted to say about you three is that you haven't, you're not together and you don't sing all the time together, but there's such an anointing on each one of you, every one of you, and how God brings you together. And when you're together, it's like you don't skip a beat, but yet you're in ministry where God has put you. But there is such a beautiful anointing upon you as a team, but as individuals. When you begin to worship while I go, Brian, that worshiper, that heart of God. And Sonia and Eric, what a blessing you are. And one more song I want you to sing before Jessica comes up to, I want you all to sing, He Knows My Name. And then the other song. And then Jessica's going to come. I know we're on a schedule, but we'll cut where we need to. The only schedule we have to listen to is our caterers. And bless their heart, they gave us, I asked for extra time. And you know what? They gave it to us. So everything may run a little bit. But I want these, you know, they were going to sing last night. But the three of them, there's anointing on their life that is beautiful. And then they get together with Josh. And it's just beautiful. Love these. Love these people. Some people, you know, they wonder why do I have them every year. It's because God hasn't told me anything different. Because they're part of what God is doing in women around the world. Yeah. you Since they were babies. That was yesterday. Yeah, you can do both. God's good, isn't he? Woo, he just shows up here every time. And it's so refreshing. And it's so beautiful to know that he has chased you down. <laughs> He's running after you. 
And then you show up here and he shows up in ways that we never imagined. He reaches the depths of our hearts that we didn't even know truly needed reached. And it's beautiful. Y'all ready to worship?
walk with me. And oh, how you tell me that I am Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, we worship Jesus, Jesus, we worship your Father. You know my name, Jesus. Worship you, Jesus. No you Jesus. know my name, Jesus. Mm. When you were dying on a tree, mm. at that moment it was only me that you seen. I believe with your last breath, Jesus. You whispered my name. As you breathed your last breath, you said, Brian. You said my name. It was me that you were thinking of. Because you knew my name. You knew my name. One. We're going to turn her off. She was going to let us know where to go. Here we go. Were the word at the beginning. One with God. name it is 
What a powerful name it is And nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus And you have no rival And you have no equal time just the ladies what a beautiful what a beautiful name it is come on What a beautiful, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. And to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, come on, just to rest, and just to rest upon his promise. And just to know, thus saith the Lord, O Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, and how Oh. 
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Praise to the King of Kings, you are my everything, and I will adore you. I will adore you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. God is so good, so good. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just another tidal wave. Just get ready. Get your surfboards out. We still got several hours of his presence. This is Jessica. How do you say your last name, Jessica? Batrakova, that's my last name. That's her last name. And, of course, Ilya, her handsome husband, is sitting back there. We're going to be hearing from both of them a little bit after a while. And tomorrow we will be hearing from them in the morning service. Uh, we had a divine appointment. We met for about five minutes. That was it. God spoke to my heart. Divine connection, connecting the dots getting ready for the next. And so it's with great pleasure, my new friend and daughter in the Lord, uh, Jessica, I, I just, you know, you can't help but love them. Her, you know, you, you can't help it. It's the Spirit of God that is just drawing. And I love you dearly. And so just share the Word of God with us. Thank you. I love you too. Good morning. As I 
walked in, the presence of God was so real. But someone told me that they were very sleepy. So if you do fall asleep, that's okay. I would probably fall asleep too during my sermon. So <laughs> sometimes my husband says that the most spiritual thing I could do is sleep. So... <laughs> So if you do fall asleep, I'll pray that the Holy Spirit works on, while you are subconscious and it stays there forever, then while you're conscious and you forget everything I say. <laughs> so it's an honor to be here this morning. It's truly a privilege. And I just would like to share a little bit from my heart what the Lord has shown me over this time. A lot has changed in our lives, my husband and I, and I would love to share with you. And if you don't mind, I would like to pray um, again. So, dear Lord, thank you. This is all for you, Jesus. You are worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Your name is wonderful. Your name is beautiful. Lord, let your name be glorified here on earth even more in these last days. Lord, as we come to the end, let us be more on fire for you. We bind every attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Satan, be gone. You are not welcome here. And we command all distractions, all fear to be gone in the name of Jesus. And we proclaim truth, we pro proclaim freedom, that your word sets us free, Lord. And I pray that you would just speak to every heart here. And we promise to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I wanted to see if my slides work. So that's my husband and me. Um, we're Ilya and Jessica Botrakovi. That's a Russian last name. And uh, we grew up in Siberia, um, so everything you heard about Siberia is true. <laughs> um, we eat wolf's meat at McDonald's. No, I'm kidding. We don't. <laughs> um, we do not live in igloos, but my city is um, 600,000 people. Um, it's a big city, uh, a lot of coal mining and steel factories. Um, and yeah, so it's not a vacation place, but it is a good mission field. Um, so my parents moved there uh, in 1993 and started a church and then multiple churches were started, uh, through their church and, um, they oversee Teen Challenge, uh, Eurasia, maybe you've heard of Teen Challenge and David Wilkerson, yes. <laughs> Yes, um, so my husband and I, uh, we met when we were 12 at kids camp. I, I taught Ilya how to play Uno, and <laughs> that's us when we were little. <laughs> so be careful who your children play Uno with right now, so you never know if they, get ma they might get married. Uh, we got married in 2021. Um, Ilya likes me right away. It took me 15 years. Uh, <laughs> but praise God, the Lord is good, and he knows how to humble us. And um, I'm so glad I married Ilya. So my best friend, my best buddy. Um, these are my parents. Their names are Ilya and Janet Bansiv. Um, they, like I said, they were in ministry in Russia in, since 1993. My dad is Russian, my mom's American, so I'm half and half. And um, my dad grew up in, during communism in the persecuted church. Um, so it was a very different lifestyle back then. And my mom grew up in Pennsylvania uh, and they met at a refugee camp um, when my mom was praying and fasting for the Soviet Union to be free. She would have a little book of pastors and pictures and how many years they had in prison and how many children they had and she would pray and fast and she went to the mission field to Austria and she was working with refugees coming from the Soviet Union 
And my dad was one of those refugees coming from the Soviet Union, and God answered our prayers and our prayer and fasting. And uh, my mom taught him and his brothers and his sisters English, and they started doing ministry. So my dad fell in love with his English teacher. So. <laughs> In 1993, they moved back to his home city and started doing ministry. Later on, I was born in 1994. I'm 28 years old. And um, I have <clears throat> two brothers and a sister. My brothers are in medical school. My sister is a nurse. And uh, they want to do medical missions. Uh, I'm the oddball. I didn't go into medicine. I went into media. So media is uh, the route that I went. But yes, my siblings are in, in the medical field and they want to do medical missions. And this is my grandma. Uh, her name is Nana. She's with Jesus now. I love her very much. But what I remember the most about Nana is that every time I had an exam in college, I would call her and say, Nana, let's pray. Nana, I have a big project. And she would pray and pray and pray. And by the end of her life, she couldn't remember my name only in the order that she prayed for us, all her grandchildren. That was the only way she could remember my name. And I, that's the biggest memory I have of my grandma was that she prayed. She prayed all the time. And this is Ilya's grandmother. Ilya's grandmother taught Ilya the Lord's Prayer. She taught my husband how to pray. Praise God. And um, she... She influenced my husband, and she prayed for him and his younger brother. And this is my Russian grandmother. These are my two grandmothers. The, run, the one on the right is my Nana, and then the one on the left is my Russian grandmother. And she also prayed and fasted. She prayed and prayed during the Soviet Union that the freedom would come. And then they moved to Canada. Um, my dad moved back to Russia, but the rest of the family stayed in Canada. But what I know about her is that she constantly, day and night, prays and prays and prays and fasts. And my aunt um, was addicted to alcohol 10 years. And she would pray, and there was no breakthrough. And last year, my grandmother, at 79, uh, prayed and fasted for three weeks on water. And breakthrough came to my aunt. And she was delivered, and now she's in Teen Challenge. And she's... In st on staff right now. Praise God. Praise God. And this is my husband's mother. And she also prayed. Her husband left her when, my, when Ilya was five years old. His dad left the family for another woman because she chose to follow Christ. She was one of the first believers that came through my parents' ministry um, in Russia. And she couldn't raise her two sons. She couldn't give them time. But what my husband says is that he remembers her praying day and night, praying and interceding on their behalf. Both my husband and his younger brother went through a rebellious period in their lives. And through her prayer and fasting, God set them free. And both of them are in ministry, in full-time ministry now. God answered her prayers. Yes. And uh, Ilya's younger brother, uh, he escaped the mobilization in Russia la last September when Mr. Putin announced uh, to mobilize all the young men to fight in Ukraine. So he and his wife of five months escaped. Uh, he got his driver's license, and in a couple days, he drove 1,000 miles to the border of Kazakhstan. And they made it, praise God. And now they're serving with the Kurds, uh, and hopefully their desire is to go to Syria to spread the gospel. So it's thanks to um, my mother-in-law's prayers that it influenced them. And uh, my husband and I, were in Israel right now. We'll get to that point. I'll share more about it. And my mother, my mother prayed and fasted. For me, it was normal to see when I would come into her bedroom, her on, the, on her knees, just crying in her pillow. I didn't hear what she said, but I knew she was praying. When I would come into my dad's office, I would hear him praying and praying and interceding for the people. That's, that's the impression that I got from my parents, that they, 
they didn't know much, but they knew how to pray. They knew how to pray, and that impacted my life. And I'm so grateful to God for my grandmothers and my parents and my mother-in-law who prayed and prayed and prayed. And your children and your grandchildren need your prayers today. This next generation, it's so dark. There's so much sin. But God is calling all of us, men and women of God, to be intercessors in these last days, to intercede for our children and our grandchildren. And if you don't have children, if you're just a teenager, God wants you to intercede for your classmates. He wants you to intercede for your college mates. He wants you to intercede for the people at your work. Prayer and fasting is so important today. And I would like to read from Esther. It says, when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow down or pay homage to him, Haman was filled with fury. But he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai alone, so as they had made known to him the people of Mordecai, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews, the people of Mordecai throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. Satan hates you. He hates your family. You're like Mordecai sitting here. You're not standing up to Haman. You're not bowing down to Satan. You're here in the right place at the right time, but Satan is out to destroy our children, our families, our nation. Satan is out to destroy America. He, he hates each one of us. And that's why God is calling us. God is calling us to intercede. God is looking. He, his eyes run to and fro, searching whose hearts are fully committed to him. God is looking. Who will stand in the gap? Who will stand today in the gap? Who will pray and intercede? God is seeking those who have the ministry of Jesus Christ. Then Mordecai told them to, to reply to Esther. This is... They had a dialogue, Mordecai and Esther threw uh, one of the servants, and Esther said, I can't go to the king, he's going to kill me. And Mordecai replied to her, don't think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. God is calling you for such a time as this to pray and intercede. God wants you to pray. God wants you to stand in the gap for such a time as this. And what will bring breakthrough in your life? What will bring breakthrough in our lives? This is the key, what I believe that brought breakthrough into Esther's life. She answered, then Esther told them, to reply to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and do not eat or drink for three days, day, uh, three days, night or day. I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Mordecai went, and, went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Prayer and fasting is the key today. Prayer and fasting is not old-fashioned. Prayer and fasting is what America needs today. It, prayer and fasting, God will give you breakthrough in your finances. God will give breakthrough in your health. God will give breakthrough in your children, in your grandchildren. I had two siblings that were very rebellious. And for one of them, my parents fasted and prayed for two weeks straight. And then for another child, for three weeks straight. And God gave breakthrough. Even though all hell was breaking loose, God gave breakthrough. Maybe you have a rebellious child. They don't need lectures. They need your prayers. They need your prayers and fasting. They don't need to be told. They know the truth. And only Jesus could set them free. But just like Daniel was fasting and he was hindered for three weeks, the, the, the evil spirit was hindering him. There's something hindering your children or your grandchildren. And your words will just bounce off. But the spirit of God can pierce right through. But that will come through prayer and fasting alone there's no other way Jesus said that this generation will be healed through prayer and fasting my parents prayed and fasted for me for my husband for all of us and we are 
bearing good fruit because of their prayer and fasting. We did not lose out. And I'm so grateful to God for my grandmothers, my parents, and your children. Maybe not now, especially teenagers. They could be very hard to work with, but they will be grateful when they grow up for your prayers and fasting. They will remember. They will remember. But there are probably two things that will hinder us from praying and fasting. And the first one is our flesh. Um, our flesh, we, we like to eat. And um, uh, just a side note, if you fast and pray today and don't eat those desserts, that's shame on you. Don't fast and pray today. <laughs> Fast and pray on Monday <laughs> after the women's conference. Not now. Those peanut butter cookies are heavenly, and I hope they're with Jesus at his marriage supper of the Lamb. <laughs> it could be food. It could be us physically. Every time we set out to fast, like every time I want to fast, I go home uh, to my parents' house and my mom's like, hey, you want to eat? And it's like any good mother. And I'm like, oh, man, that food looks amazing. <laughs> but prayer and fasting brings breakthrough. Sometimes the enemy will say, you have a headache. Uh, don't pray and fast. You need to eat. You, he will give all these distractions and all these excuses right when you set to pray and fast. You never, sometimes... You know, if there are people who don't eat breakfast, and when they decide to fast and pray, they're so hungry that they have to eat breakfast. It's, the enemy plays games, and our flesh bothers us in praying and fasting. And all we do is, my husband and I, we just encourage each other. We don't put each other down. We just say, let's pray. Let's ask God for grace. God, give me grace to pray and fast. Give me your, I can't even do it without you. I can't pray without you. I can't fast without you. Jesus, give me your grace because I know you prayed and fasted and you're now interceding on my behalf. Give me your grace, Jesus. That's the only key. That's the only way to battle our flesh. The second thing is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will stop you from praying and interceding. You have a conflict in your family. The enemy lies between husbands and wives, children and parents, people in ministry, and your mind is preoccupied with the conflict. And you, it will be too hard to start interceding when you're hurt. And Queen Esther had all right to be bitter. Her rights were taken away. She could have been bitter at the situation. She had no freedom of speech. She was taken against her will. She didn't know if she's going to be the queen or end up in the Harlem for the rest of her life. We don't know what happened to her parents. She was an orphan. Esther had all right to be bitter at the situation. She could have been bitter at Mordecai for allowing her to be taken. She, she could have been bitter at the king for making that law. Maybe God himself, maybe she could have blamed God himself. And maybe there's a situation in your life where someone has hurt you or you're in very difficult circumstances. And maybe there are thoughts in your mind against God. The enemy keeps pushing these thoughts in your mind. They're, they might not be even from you yourself. The enemy is sowing lies against God himself that God allowed this to happen. For me, what helped me is sometimes when I can't feel the presence of God, I have to say, God, I'm sorry for blaming you. I'm sorry for doubting you. Because that's a blockage between us and God and this unforgiveness and this bitterness or disappointment that we have and the devil wants you to be in prison in your mind 
He wants to destroy your family, your people, your country. He doesn't want you to intercede on their behalf. He knows the power of prayers of a widow or a rejected woman. And he's going to try to cripple you with unforgiveness so that you don't pray, so that you're focused on yourself. Hurting people hurt others. Healed people intercede for others. Satan doesn't want that. He knows. He knows the power of your prayers. He knows the power of intercession and fasting because he loses, but he wants to cripple you through offenses and through lies and through bitterness and unforgiveness. He doesn't want revival. Maybe you're carrying hurt from a person that's not even alive today. I know people who are hurt by their fathers for being so harsh with them even though their fathers might be dead for already 40 years it doesn't matter God wants you to pray for the next generation but if you're bitter at your children how will you pray for them some mothers might be bitter because their children forgot to wish them a happy birthday some Grandmothers might be bitter at their children for not acknowledging them when they walk into the room and they're on their phones. That's very painful. It does hurt. It's not normal. It's not supposed to be that way. And I'm sorry for my generation for doing that, for just staring at the phone and not acknowledging your presence or parents' presence. They don't say hello. It's an addiction. It's a spiritual battle. It's not against you personally. And they need your prayers. God wants to use your husband, but how will you pray for him if you're bitter at him? What happened to you in your past or to me, we can't change our past. People have hurt you. Maybe your teachers at school, maybe your classmates have hurt you, or you were bullied. I think Jesus, if he had Facebook, he would be bullied as well in the comment section. Jesus would be laughed at as well. We can't change what happened in the past. But what helped me to understand forgiveness, forgiveness is not forgetting what happened. God is not asking you to forget. It's not agreeing with what happened or with what's happening now if someone continuously hurts your feelings. It's not, it would be amazing to be reconciled to that person, but forgiveness is not reconciliation. Reconciliation could be one of the results, but sometimes it's just impossible to reconcile with a person who's hurt you many, many times. And you know who I'm talking about. They might be very dangerous people. But forgiveness is different. Forgiveness is not talking about that person with your friends and gossiping and spreading rumors about that person. Just talking it through is not going to heal you. It's just going to sow division in the church. That's not forgiveness. It will poison the people around you against that person. You're not bringing unity to the body of Christ if you're gossiping. But people who gossip are usually hurt people. What forgiveness for me is, it means letting go. It's not forgetting, it means letting go. Saying, not my will, Father, but your will be done. Forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they do. They do not know how painful it is. They do not know how unfair it is. I want them to know how unfair they were to me, but you know best. And I'm choosing to let go. I'm choosing to forgive this person because that person is not suffering. You're the one that's suffering if you don't forgive. That person is attached to your mind and blocking you from interceding and praying and using your time to pray and fast. You're spending so much time thinking how you could have said something different, how you could have acted differently, how you could have done this and that. But you can't go back to the past. And forgiveness for me is like a scar. People hurt us. People, 
we get cut. For example, I have a scar here on my finger. And when I got cut, I had a lot of blood. It, it was very close to the joint. It was one of those office knives, you know, that you push out. And I cut myself, and it was really deep, and it hurt. But I started putting antibacterial stuff, and it took time to heal. Now as I look at the cut, I remember how I got cut. I remember what happened, but when I touch it, it doesn't hurt. And that's what forgiveness means to me. When I remember what happened in the past, I don't boil with anger, but I bubble with gratitude to God that He healed me. Instead of regretting, being thankful, God, thank you that you brought me through. Thank you that you were with me. And sometimes you want to do something nice. Right here on my right finger, you might see it. I have a really bad cut. I cut myself last week. <laughs> I was making a peanut butter cheesecake for my younger brother and his wife. And I stuck my hand in the blender. Thankfully, it was off. And I cut myself on the blade. And I was trying to do something nice. Maybe you're trying to do something nice, and you get hurt while doing something nice for someone. Your feelings get hurt. And that cut bled for over 24 hours. That was a deep cut I had. I had to rebandage it several times. And I can't even button my dress. I have to have my, ask my husband to button my dress. I have to brush my teeth like this. I have to put my mascara on like this because it's just so painful. But it's healing. It's taking time. I'm starting to do more. If I left the cut and I didn't do anything with it, I would have gotten infected and probably gangrene and et cetera, et cetera. Bitterness is an infection. And forgiving is like your bactine or your peroxide. And it's going to hurt at, at first, but God will clear the pus out. And sometimes you have to relive what happened to you, but you have to relive the pain with Jesus and allow him to heal your memory. And the person who has scars as well is Jesus. Jesus didn't forget what was done to him. That would be absurd. Jesus doesn't ask you to forget what happened to you. Jesus was able to say, Father, forgive them. Father, I give them over to you. God, I'm letting go, even though this is so unfair. God, I'm letting go. And even though he was bleeding to death, after he forgave, he was able to take care of his mother. He was able to minister to the thief on the cross. Even though you might be bleeding in your heart and in your emotions, when you ask God to give you the grace to forgive, you could still minister even in your pain and your suffering. Just like Jesus ministered in his pain and his suffering. When he forgave, he was able to focus on others. Hurt people focus on their hurt. Those who ask God for grace to forgive, they focus on others even though they're in so much pain even though I have this big cut on my finger I'm still able to brush my teeth I'm able to do stuff but it's hard it's hard to minister but you're you're extending yourself even in your hurt and your pain I loved what you said about children we're praying for children already for over a year and that really ministered to us even in your pain and hurt you ministered to me and that's the best way that the body of Christ could be vulnerable and minister to each other Jesus died on the cross. He was able to forgive us, and that's why he gives the grace to forgive. And his perfect body has scars. It is, it, those two things don't mesh, a perfect body and scars, it, because he was healed. He forgave, and he remembers what the cost was. And God wants your wounds to become scars. Prayer and fasting. Jesus is our intercessor today. And that's the greatest ministry we can have today. That's what every revival started with in the United States was through prayer and fasting. All the great awakenings. And that's what God wants to do again. He's not done. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
But he wants to heal you first so that you can be in his ministry. Because that's what he does today. Prayer and fasting. And I would like to pray that God would heal our hearts. Maybe someone's hurting you constantly in your household. Usually we get hurt by the closest people to us. Maybe your leaders in your church or your pastor hurt you. I don't know. Pastors are not perfect. They're not Jesus. And the best thing you could do is talk to them and explain. I'm sure they'll say sorry. I wish people told me that I hurt them. I, I would say sorry. And that would give me an opportunity to learn and not do that anymore. But by keeping quiet and thinking, oh, what are they going to think about me? You're suffering because of unforgiveness, and then others suffer because they get hurt as well. It's okay to share one-on-one -on -one what has hurt you. But there are people who might not say sorry. Pastors are wonderful people. Pastor Daryl and Darlene are bishops. Wonderful people. And God has placed an anointing on them. But also pastors are not perfect. And it's okay to share your hurt. It's okay. And they love you so much. Your pastors love you. They love you dearly. And they want unity in the church. And by forgiving, you bring unity to the body of Christ. That's the best thing you can do. But then there are people who are not in the body of Christ, who will never ask you for forgiveness. Or maybe they're not alive today. God wants you to let go. And that will only happen through prayer. And if you would like, can I pray with you? And you can repeat after me. We'll ask God for grace to forgive. And then we'll say, God, I choose to forgive this person. And when you go home, you can pray that. When you're alone, God, I choose to forgive my mother. I choose to forgive my father. I had to do that with people who hurt me deeply. I was almost married to someone else. And that person lied and had anger issues and really hurt me. And I... I had to say, God, I forgive that person. I let go. I forgive him for putting me down, for humiliating me, for laughing at me, for being angry with me, for making me scared. I had to name all those things and relive that pain and that agony and say, God, heal my memory. I had to forgive the president of Russia for starting this war because we lost our home. We lost our car. We can't go back home. It's been one year. We, we escaped in March. I had to forgive him and say, God, you judge him. He's an ungodly man. I, I'll pray for his salvation. I don't know if he'll be saved. I don't know. But I had to forgive him because we lost everything. We had to move 16 times between eight different countries because our citizenships are different in our first year of marriage. It was very stressful. It was very difficult. I would go to a store and look at the dishes because I missed my dishes. And Ilya would say, let's go. We got to go. So many times, over and over, we didn't have our own place to stay. When we arrived in Israel, we thought we would have a place. And for two months, we didn't. We lived with a friend for three weeks, and then we lived with our parents. <laughs> we lived with our parents. My husband and his, uh, my brother and his wife lived with our parents and my sister, and there were seven people in the apartment for about two months. It was a full house. But I remember when I forgave that situation, when I forgave, I said, God, I'm letting go. I'm letting go of everything that we had, the ministry. I'm letting go of... Friends, I'm letting go. I don't think I'll, we'll ever go back. I hope maybe one day, but I don't know. God, I'm letting go of our car. I'm letting go of our apartment, all our things. And God provided an apartment on March 1st. We just moved three weeks ago. <laughs> and
and our heart's desire is to have people in our home feeding Israelis, giving lots of food to Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, uh, Israeli-born citizens, reaching them through hospitality and kindness because through friendship right now is one of the most successful ways in reaching people with the good news. And God provided, God healed, we forgave, we let go. I will remember what was in the past, but as I look back, I said, God, thank you that they didn't separate us. God, thank you that they didn't send my husband to Ukraine. God, thank you that they didn't take me away or put me in prison because I'm a U.S. citizen. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. So if we can pray, God wants to heal you. God wants to heal all of us so that we could have his ministry of intercession. So I'll pray, and if you would like to repeat after me, you can. Dear Jesus, I come to you, and I ask you to forgive me for the times I doubted you, blamed you, for not forgiving others. I need your help. I admit that I cannot forgive. Give me your grace to forgive those who have hurt me. And I choose to let go. I choose to forgive them, those specific people you brought to my mind. I'm letting go. Heal my memory. Heal my emotions. And allow me to be an intercessor with you, Jesus. Let my wounds become scars, just like you have scars. And allow me to pray and fast by your grace alone for my generation, for my children, for my nation and the salvation of the world. Use me, Lord, in these last days that I'm focused on you and bringing people to you than rather on myself. I choose you, Jesus. I choose your healing and I give you my pain. Take it, Lord. Take my broken pieces and use it for your glory. Thank you for hearing me and for setting me free. I love you, Lord. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. This would be an amazing time to worship and pray and you can express your pain and hurt to the Lord with specific people to say their name while you're worshiping Jesus. Because the spiritual realm needs to know who you forgive. Because you will be released. God, I forgive them for this and everything that the Holy Spirit brings to your mind, say it. Don't try to brush it off. Oh, that's petty. That's not petty. That hurt you. That's not petty. Say it. God, I forgive my husband. God, I forgive my wife. God, I forgive my children. God, I forgive my grandchildren. God, I forgive my classmates for bullying me. God, I forgive. I forgive the president for my financial instability. Both presidents are not perfect. God, I forgive different people who the Holy Spirit brings to your mind. And it might be the oddest people that you've never thought about. Because people try to forget and they bury their emotions so that they don't feel pain, but then there's no emotion at all. 
And it's okay if you cry. It's okay. Tears are heaven's contact lenses. It's okay if you cry. Jesus cried too. If you're a man or a woman, crying is okay. And Jesus cries with you. And he will heal you, I promise, if you let him. Yeah. And he will use you as a mighty prayer warrior and intercessor. And God will bring revival to this city, to this church, to your church, to your nation, to your state. God is going to bring revival to your children, to the people all around you. He's going to answer. Allow him to heal you first and then use you for his glory. We can start worshiping. And thank you. Lord, you're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Sing it one more time. You're all I want. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Lord, draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will do. Cause nothing else could take the place to feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way, bring me back to you, back to your arms, Lord. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're Help me know you are near. Help me know you are near. Help me know you are that work there we go isn't the spirit of God just so soaky today 
I mean, I just, I can't stop crying. I'm a big, I've been crying all week, but man, the presence of God. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Jessica, thank you for that beautiful word. There were like 43,000 nuggets in there. So I'm going to have to listen to it about 43,000 times so I can catch it. But anyway, I'm supposed to do prizes, but <laughs> I did find a phone. Someone, oh, you was in the potty. I'm sure it's clean. Yeah, you do your best work in there, right? Reminds me of a library story. Anyway, it's fine. So get your tickets out. We're going to do this really, really fast because we have, I don't know if you've noticed on the schedule, but we're not like having breaks, you know, so if you need to use the potty, take your phone with you and do it and then come back because we have a lot packed in today because we don't want to miss anything that God has, right? So hurry up and get your tickets out, all right? Yeah. Bishop McGee, did you get a ticket? Well, good, because you're not allowed to. I was just trying to make Josh be jealous. Okay, ready? Here we go. Eight, nine, six. You don't need a purse? You carry one all the time anyway for your honey, don't you? Yes, sir. Eight, nine, six, seven, three, three. Yes. Yes. Okay, pick one out for mama. Pick it out for mama. I didn't plan that, but if I could have, I would have. Yes. Eight nine six five eight six. Well, come on up, sister. You can pick anything. I feel so hip hoppy with this music. Eight nine six seven two seven. Yo, <laughs> that's as fly as I get. Eight nine six seven two seven. That's better. 727. Ah, oh, here it comes. Okay. Don't say I'm not stirring it. What is that? 896664. Six, six, Think, Dirkway. No, this is it's the honor system. The devil knows if you're lying. But worse, sir. God knows. 664? Yes. Hi, I haven't seen you in so long. One, two, three, four. One more. One more, and then we're going to go right into the next session. Okay. Eight, nine, six, six, zero, nine. Woo! All right. All right. I didn't bring my thing up. Am I supposed to do anything else? I would love to introduce the fantastic... The beautiful, the hilarious, my friend, Miss Sonia Taylor. Yes! Like Brian told me that um, I had to hurry up because he was tired and he was hungry. So I said, whatever. Hi, ladies! Listen, I'm so glad to be here with you again this year. I am always so grateful and honored when pastor asks me to come and to uh, share with you. And I'm going to do that today and just so excited. I want to I wanna give a little bit of honor where honor is due. And that is to your beautiful pastor's wife, Darlene. She, I mean, we love you. Mm -hmm, but we're going to go ahead and raise her name a little higher today, Pastor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to lift her up a little bit more today. Um, she has been a rock for me in so many moments. I'm going to get tearful. There have been moments to where, I don't know if you all know this, but sometimes pastoring is really hard. And you try not to carry the weight of the entire church on your shoulders so that it doesn't make you just fall apart. We have gone through some tough things this last year. 
we had a young man in our church get diagnosed with brain cancer, came through it, three little girls came through it, um, had a clear scan in December, and by the end of January, they came back and said, it's everywhere in your brain. It, the tumors are not tumors anymore. It's everywhere. We were caring so much, and it seemed like so many people in our church were just fighting so many different scenarios. It was like one hit after another. And as a pastor, you carry that weight. You carry it. You try to carry it for them so they don't have to walk it alone. And it gets hard. And then you try to deal with your own stuff. <laughs> and this lady was a rock to me at one point. I called her just sobbing. I couldn't even hardly get my words out. I told Chris, I, my husband, and I said, I gotta call, I gotta call Darlene. I, I, don't, I, don't even, I, don't even, I don't even have words. Like, I just gotta call her. And she encouraged me and told me, you're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. You're gonna get to conference and you're gonna see that God's gonna bring you through. And let me tell you something, he has. My friend Jeremy, they did not give him a good prognosis. They told him that basically they were trying to um, prolong his life, not save it. His wife was discouraged. She said, I don't have faith. And I said, it's fine. We are, as your church family, we're lowering you through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. We got you, sister. God said, if I have faith like a mustard seed, I can move mountains. And I'm telling you, we are believing God. And two weeks ago, Kim, am I right? About two weeks ago, they tried to take their last vacation. In the middle of it, he got sick, started running 102 fever. They had to emergency rush him home, took him straight to the hospital. And Courtney was just bracing herself. She called me. She said, my husband's dying. I can't do this. How do I walk through this? I'm literally watching. What do I say to my eight-year-old? How do I explain to her? I don't, he even told my husband, he said, I don't want to get to the point to where my girls don't trust God because I died. You talk about weight. But two weeks ago, we got a phone call. That during that whole process, they said, oh, you have a lung infection. Oh, you got COVID. Oh, you got, like, just kept going through all these things. And Courtney's like, I can't take any more bad news. I'm done. I said, well, I'm not. So we're fine. She called us. They did an MRI. The doctors came back and said, the treatment has worked better than we could have ever imagined. The swelling in the brain that was there, it's gone. The cancer that we saw, it's gone. And let me tell you something, God worked a miracle. Courtney said, she said, you know, you can tell me about your medicine all you want, but I know that we just witnessed a miracle, that God just saved my husband's life. And they said, well, we want to still keep doing the treatment. I said, girl, we'll take the treatment. I don't care about no treatment because we know that Jeremy's going to live and not die, says the Lord. But this lady has been a rock to me, and I just want to say thank you for taking my phone calls and my... <laughs> <I can't... laughs> She took it all. Amen? Let me tell you something really quick. I'm, we're doing so well. God is so good. My, you guys remember my son, Crew. He came here one year and, and sang, and they're not here jerks, but it's fine. <laughs> this is my little buddy, Crew. I know he looks like John the Baptist. <laughs> we're praying for him. <laughs> for a while, he just had the stash, and I was interceding. It was rough. It was, it was rough, but he, he's got a beard now. We're thankful for that. And that is his beautiful fiance. That is our beautiful Aaron. You guys, I'm getting a daughter. <sighs> Finally, it's wonderful. She loves Jesus with her whole heart and she doesn't think he's nuts. And that is a miracle <laughs> because he is his mother and I'm sorry. He's loud. He's either at a 10 or he's asleep. We, that's, that's where he's at. And then my, my 17 year old little buddy, this is his senior picture. I think I gave it to you. No, keep going, keep going, keep going. There he is. Oh, he's so cute. That's my guy right there. Oh, I love that kid. He is, loves Jesus. 
just amazing. Got a, a football scholarship to Missouri Baptist. He's going to be going to play football for Missouri Baptist University. God gave him the desires of his heart. Now we just got to pray that his head stays intact. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're just praying for that. But he's beautiful. And then my youngest, I know I got these all backwards. I'm sorry for the way I sent them to you. That's my littlest guy. That's Elijah. He is 12, and he is my mini-me. So pray for Chris because he's something else. And then the whole fam. Here's a picture of the whole family on senior night. Look at my beautiful family. There's the stash. Do you see the stash? The Lord intervened. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. But that's my, that's my husband. We built, be married for 27 years. Um, I turned 50 this year. The big 5-0. It's fine. I'm having like five parties. It's okay. It's fine. I told my husband we're going to have to sell a child because I have to have a lot of parties. But God is good. Amen. I want to remind you of a scripture. Let's go to, I'm going to jump into it because I want to make sure I have time to get to everything that I need to say because I got a lot. Jeremiah 29 11. We love this verse, right? We love putting on our bumper stickers on our key chains and we say, Whoa, I know the plans that God has for me, right? He says, This is the Lord's declaration. I have plans for your well being. This is the Christian Standard Version. He says, I have plans for your well being, not for disaster, but to give you hope and a future. Amen? He says, You will seek me. And you will find me when you search me with all of your heart. Search for me with all of your heart. We love that scripture. But I'm going to be honest with you. Some of us are stuck. We quote that scripture, but we're standing still. Oh, I know the plans God has for me. Say it's Lord's plan for hope in the future. But I'm not moving. Lord, just move me where you want me to go. But I'm not going. <laughs> Lord, take me to the ends of the earth as long as it's down to Walmart. <laughs> Lord, send me. Jesus, send me. But I'm going to Goodwill. <laughs> and I live at Goodwill, y'all. Let me tell you. That dress I had on last night, $10 at Goodwill. You know what I'm saying? It's cute stuff. But here's the thing. We get stuck. And now you can go to that picture of Kai. He was stuck in my bed. They were wrestling on my bed. That was when he was younger, obviously. He's not that small. And so he was there, and they were wrestling, and he fell down in between the, in my footboard and the mattress. And he was like, Mom! Mom! I can't get up! So I went and got my camera. <laughs> because, hello! Hilarious! Right? He was stuck. He could not get out. He had to have my help to get him out of where he was. And I'm hoping some of you in your walk with God, you are right here. This is where you are. Now, go to the picture of the Superman from Six Flags. This was when Kai, <laughs> he was waiting for the Superman and this couple was behind him and said, do you care if we go before you so we can ride with our friends? And Kai said, uh, uh, okay. Because he had been waiting a long time. So he let him go. And do you know, when they got up there, they all got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, mom, I dodged a bullet. <laughs> but here's the crazy thing. Some of us tried to get ahead of ourselves and didn't move when God wanted us to move, and now we're stuck. It wasn't your turn, but you did it anyway, and you got stuck. Woo, I'm preaching to somebody today. Then there was a time, of Kai, listen, Kai was the one kid that was going to, you know, put me in a nut house eventually. That baby had me just... Whoo! If I said no, he'd kind of look at me, and you could see the calculations going on in his head, like, how fast can she run? <laughs> but I might get to accomplish what I want to do before she gets to me. So let's do it! <laughs> that was Kai. That's the reason he plays football. 
He doesn't care who hits him. He's small. People think he's small. He can't do a whole lot. And then he takes out their legs, and they're like, oh, there you are. He's, he's, a really, he's not the biggest guy on the field, but he's good. But there was one time I was pregnant with Elijah, and my door, somebody knocks on my door, and it's a little neighbor girl. She said, hi, um, Kai's stuck. I said, honey, where is he? Um, he's in a tree. <laughs> what? I go outside. We had one of those big pine trees in the front of our yard. He climbed almost to the top. No, I should have. What was I thinking? I was pregnant. Pregnancy brain, it was fine. And he was up at the top of the tree. I'm pregnant. I couldn't climb up the tree. Crew tried to climb up the tree. And as he got closer to the top, because he was bigger than Kai, the branches started cracking. Then he got nervous and got down. I thought, great, I've got to call the local fire department and be like, listen, it's not my cat, it's my kid. It's stuck in a tree. And this little girl from down the street, she was a teenager, and she was about, mm, yep, yeah, that's about right, my pinky. And she came around. She said, y'all need help? Yes, ma'am, my son is stuck in the tree. She climbs up there, and she gets him. And before she got there, though, he yells down to me, Mommy! <gasps> Mommy! I said, what, buddy? We're trying to get to you, guy. Just sit still. We're trying to get to you. He said, I don't want to live the bad life. <laughs> but that's where some of us are. We've gotten ourselves into situations, and we can't get out of it. And we don't want to move because we don't want to live the bad life. We don't want to deal with the repercussions of our decision. He got down. I said, Kai, what did that even mean? I didn't want to die. I said, well, you didn't. You might die in a minute because I'm going to kill you, but it's fine. <laughs> now, we have all those places where we get stuck. We're all in different places today. Some of us have very familiar and similar stories. Even today as, tell me your name again. Jessica, even to, I'm terrible with names. I even forget my kids. It's fine. <laughs> I'm like, crew, Kai, Elijah, person. Look at me! But in, we've, as she's talking, I'm like, yeah, been there. Anybody else? We all have some familiar, some similar stories. Some of us are living our best life, man. We've turned a corner. You're walking in here on a high cloud. God is good. Girl, I don't need nothing. Not nothing. I don't need nothing. Because God is good. He has blessed me. I am blessed and highly favored. Everything's going just perfect. But then you have some that are in the middle of a storm. Some of us just got through a storm and we're weathered, we're tired, we're exhausted. And some of us, you're starting to see the dark clouds forming. And you're a little worried about what's coming. We cannot see what is coming next. And because of that, so many emotions are whirling around in our head. We have worry, fear, anxiety, diminishing hope, shaky faith, overwhelmed. We feel like we're drowning. We're just overwhelmed by all of these emotions. We are stuck. But I'm going to talk to you about three different areas. Three different areas that we're going to talk about today. Some of us relate to this. Job chapter 6. Verse 8 through 13 says, he said, Job says this, all I want is an answer to one prayer, a last request to be honored. And this thing's, oh, he's so, yeah, let me continue. Let God step on me. Squash me like a bug and be done with me for good. Anybody ever been there? 
I'd at least have the satisfaction of not having blasphemed the holy God before being pressed past the limits. Where's the strength to keep my hopes going? What future do I have to keep me going? Do you think I have nerves of steel? Do you think I'm made of iron? Do you think I can pull myself up by the bootstraps when I don't even have any boots? Been there. The day I called Pastor Darlene, I was there, <laughs> snorting a whole nine yards. It was ugly. It was an ugly cry. But I'm telling you, we've all felt like that. And we're going to talk about three areas where we are stuck. Area number one, you're stuck in the blessing. What? <gasps> Sonia, God can't bless me enough. It can sure make you stuck because you try to hang on to it. You try to stay there. Number two, storms. And number three, being disconnected. So let's talk about the blessing. Like I told you earlier, you're in a sweet spot. Y'all, my pants keep falling down. That's fine. <laughs> Pardon me as I dress myself. Whew, it's fine. Look, if I keep pulling them up, just know I'm going to eat later. They'll stay up. <laughs> It'll be fine. But there are some of you here, you feel like you're in the sweet spot. Your prayers are getting answered. Your job is good. Your marriage is good. Kids are in a good place. Things are going well. You have no complaints. All in all, life is good. Some of us even get that feeling of, I have finally arrived to where I have been wanting to be for years. I'm here. This is, anybody ever been there? Feel that way? But I have something to tell you. You were not created to stay in the high times. He gives us those high times for a refreshing, for a rest. But then life happens. We don't have to sit and wait for the shoe to drop because we know he's going to be with us. And this happened in the Bible. In Matthew 7, chapter 17, it's verses 1 through 13. And this is, I'm going to just kind of go through it. Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him to the mountain. Then right in front of them, he was transfigured. He saw, they saw Moses and Elijah. They show up. What? Like, that's a pretty good spot to be, right? He's got 12 disciples. He chose Peter, James, and John to go and to witness this thing. You talk about them feeling pretty awesome in that moment. He chose those three to go to witness what was about to happen. And what did they want to do? What did Peter want to do? If you read that passage of scripture, it tells you, Peter said, oh Lord, let's build three shelters and it is good for us to be here. Didn't he sound spiritual? He wanted to build shelters so they could stay in that moment. Some of you have built shelters in your moment, but God never intended for you to stay in that moment. And let me tell you what God did. God didn't, you know, set Peter on his knee. Okay, Peter. Now that's a great idea, son. I, I, I hear you. I like your idea. Mm -mm, that's not what he did, right? And let me tell you something. We, we love being coddled. Right? We love it. At my house, we don't do no coddling. I'm not a coddling kind. <laughs> we play spoons, and when the person loses, we all bang the spoon on the table and put the big L on our forehead. <laughs> and yell, loser! <laughs> Got to teach him how to lose, right? I mean, why not do it loudly? <laughs> Y'all like, thank God I wasn't raised by her. <laughs> Pray for my children. But God did not coddle Peter. Jesus did not coddle Peter in that moment. Do you know what happened? Ignored him. God interrupted Peter. Didn't even let him finish his thought. Interrupted and said, <clears throat> this is my son in who I am well pleased. Because he knew the plan that had to unfold. And if they stayed there, the plan of his salvation 
would not have unfolded. Sometimes we like to stay in that, but we have to realize we have to come off our high horse of a mountain because God has a plan for you to bring the good news of the gospel to those around you. And when we're on that high mountain, we will miss it. You can't stay in the clouds. Do not get stuck and try to build a shelter on the mountain. One way we get stuck is in the blessing, right? These times are refreshing, are wonderful, but you have a calling. You have a job to do. You have been called to the ministry of reconciliation, which means we have a job of reconciling the broken man to the risen Savior, which leads them to the Heavenly Father. That's our job. We ain't got time to build shelters and no time to even get stuck in the good moment. We have to be ready to move into what is next, no matter how difficult. Then we find ourselves in the midst, some of us are in the middle of a storm. We go to when Peter walked on the water in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 32. And I'm going to skip reading it because I don't want to, you can go back and read it. You have a Bible and most of you know the story. They're out on the water. The storms are in. Jesus isn't in the boat this time. He's on shore. Jesus sees them struggling. So he's like, oh, let me go to them. I mean, and why not? Walk on the water. I mean, you're Jesus. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Walked on the water. Walked out of there. Now, I want you to notice something. When they got there, they thought he was a ghost. When they realized it was him, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Now, mind you, all of us like to think that Peter walked out on that water and the water was smooth and Jesus had already calmed the storm. Negative, Captain. The storm was still raging. The winds were still blowing. He said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus looked at him and said, come on. He stepped out. He had his eyes on Jesus. He's walking on water. You guys, I had a hard time walking down the hallway yesterday in my heels. I almost fell flat on my face. He walked on. I see you back there, Luke. Christy, Luke's heckling me. He's back there heckling me right now. But here's the thing. He walked on water. But the second he took his eyes off of Jesus, what did he do? He began to sink. He took his eyes off Jesus. Fear overcame him. Fear overwhelmed him. I've had so many moments where I get too afraid to move forward because I'm scared and I feel like I'm sinking. But then God shows up. It's like, why are you so afraid? I got you. I remember when we went zip lining in Costa Rica. We were on a missions trip. Note to self, I am not called to missions. You don't, Kim can agree. You don't want me to be on a missions trip with you because the second a bug flies near, the plan for salvation goes out of the window. Like it's just, it's gone. Now it's about saving myself. I'm sorry Jesus loves you, but now I'm dying and there's a bug on me and I can't survive. It was terrible. But we zip lined across. And I remember my husband said, do you want me to go behind you? No, because you're going to push me. Negative. I know you've been married. To <laughs> you ain't pushing me off that ledge. I said, I want my daddy behind me. Why did I want my daddy behind me? Because I knew my dad had all, the, he, he raised me. He knows <laughs> my issue. I wanted my daddy behind me because I knew my dad would be patient with me. I knew my dad would have my back. I knew he would encourage me the whole time. You got this, baby. It's okay. Daddy's right here. I was a grown woman. And my dad's on that line. Daddy's right here, baby. Okay, daddy. And... If you think I'm exaggerating, was I, am I exaggerating, Kim? No. 
I'm going to get it. I'm going to go now. Why? <laughs> Daddy's right here, baby. But that's how God is. Sometimes we are so afraid, and God's like, I got you. It's okay. Take that step. I'm going to support you. I got you. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell Peter. But here's the thing, that a long time ago, my husband preached a message about this, and he said, sometimes I wonder if Jesus looked a little past Peter and looked at the men in the boat and said, oh, you of little faith. Because Peter was the only one on the water. The other guys were still on the boat, worried about the storm. Some of us are on the water and we've lost sight of our Savior who's like, I got you. But some of us are in the boat going, I haven't even taken this step out. Because we're too afraid. We're too worried. We don't know what's coming. We don't know what's going to happen. When we're in the storm, our vision is reduced. We forget how things have worked in the past. Now think about this. When Jesus calmed the storm, it wasn't the first time he had calmed the storm. If you remember, he calmed the storm. He was sleeping on the boat, and the storms came, and all the time, it was me on a zip line. And Jesus got up and said, oh, my God, peace, be still. And it calmed. So it wasn't the first time they were in the middle of a storm on a boat. But they had forgotten. They had also just witnessed him feed 5,000 people with just a little bit of lunch. And do you know, after that whole situation, Jesus got on the boat. He calmed the storm again. They get off the boat. They go. Now they're in a the group of 4,000 people. And they said, after all they just witnessed and been through, the disciples looked and said, oh, Jesus, how are we going to feed all these people that have been here for such a long time? Are you joking? But our vision sometimes in the midst of a need gets blurred. We forget what he's done. We lose sight of who he is in the midst of our circumstances. We lose sight of what he has already done. And we're stuck. We're stuck. <laughs> we're stuck in blessing. We're stuck in the storm. And then we forget who he is. Remember that old song? My brother's going to crack up when I start singing it because we used to sing it all the time. He'll do it again. Oh, he'll do it again. If you'll just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. Hasn't he always come through? For you, he's the same now as he was back then. You may not know him, you may not know it, but he'll do it again. You have to remember who he is. And the last area we get stuck I call this the area of disconnect. Well, I'm not disconnected. Just hang on. Because some of us don't even realize we're disconnected. Got to pull my pants up again. <laughs> Moving around too much. It's fine. Some of us are in a place where we feel disconnected from God and wonder if we will ever get that connected feeling back. Some of us have been in a storm and we have questioned his goodness. We've questioned his plan. We've questioned his provision. We've questioned his promises. Some of us have taken our little bony finger and we pointed it up to him and say, 
why have you done this to me? Why are you doing this? Why do I have to? Why is this happening? How dare you? I have served you my whole life. And you're doing, you're allowing this to happen to me? There is definitely some disconnect in some of you. We look at John chapter 18, verse 15 through 27. This is the story of when Peter denies Jesus. <laughs> Out of fear, he denied his Savior. After everything he had witnessed, this man walked on the water. Saw miracle after miracle, provision after provision. And Jesus has been arrested. He even cut off a man's ear to try to protect his Savior. And now here he is, around a fire. And as my husband so kindly puts it, cursing out little teenage girls because he's afraid to tell people that he's with Jesus. They said, hey, aren't you the guy? No. No. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. That's that other guy. Mm -mm, not me. Then somebody that was actually there when Jesus was arrested witnessed Peter cut off the ear of some guy. said, wait a minute. You were in the garden. And what does Peter say? Uh-uh. No. Mm -mm. Wrong guy. Not me. And then he does it a total of three times. And then Jesus dies. And Peter is stuck. He's stuck with his bad decision. He is stuck with his words. He is stuck with his actions. And he doesn't see a way out of the guilt and of the shame. He's stuck. He feels disconnected. Now, we all like to think that they were these men of great faith, and they were like, oh, it's fine. On um, three days, he's going to rise again. It's fine, everybody. Let's go to dinner. Let's just wait for the third day. It's going to be fine. He's coming back. That's not what happened. They were distraught. They didn't know what was going on. Even when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, she cried. She wept. She said, they've taken my Savior, and I don't know where they've taken him. And then she realizes it was him. And she runs and she goes. And I, I love that Jesus just kept showing up. And you know every time Jesus showed up, Peter had it in his mind. I wonder if he knows. I wonder if he knows. Is he going to say something to me? Does he know? Does he, does he remember that he told me I was going to do it? And then does he know that I actually did it? And then do I say something? Do I bring it up? Do I apologize? Do I? What do I? I can't even imagine the inner turmoil. And it thinks, this is my dear friend Robin over here. Robin, raise your hand. She is my sister by choice. She's been, we have been best friends since we were itty bitties. We are inseparable. We look like we're sisters, which is really wonderful. And her sister actually looks more like my sister than Robin does. It's, we go out and they're like, oh, are you guys triplets? No. But there was a time where Robin and I, we were the perfect children. We never did anything wrong. <laughs> right, Robin? Mm -hmm. Well, we liked these two brothers. It was Mike and Jeff were their names. Mike was a skater dude, had the hair, long hair down in front of his face, and it was beautiful. I just, I was I'm infatuated. But they were not good Christian guys. Let's just be real, right? No, they weren't good guys. They were cute. <laughs> so we devised a plan to go to the movies with her sister. We weren't going to the movies. But her sister took us to the movies. <laughs> But it was to meet Mike and Jeff. So we go, we have a grand old time. We come home and we're, I mean, we're just chatting up a storm, we're chatting with Rob. Susan's on the phone with her boyfriend and we are just chatting up a storm about all wonderful, beautiful, it's wonderful. <laughs> all the things girls talk about. 
And the next morning we wake up and Susan comes upstairs and she's as white as a ghost. She walks in our room and we're like, what, what's wrong? And all she says was, mom knows. she knew we go down to breakfast her mom is her mom is june cleaver like we had pop tarts and like lucky charms for breakfast i go to her house and it's like eggs bacon biscuits and gravy like every morning before school and then there was always this pill on my plate i'm like what is that she's like you got to take your vitamin Ugh. <laughs> vitamins and then we could only drink milk with our meals like no where is the sweet tea my friend Linda, where Linda's here somewhere, she makes the best sweet tea. Ooh, she, um, I'm like, I need Linda's sweet tea, baby. Milk? Water? What? But here's the thing. We're sitting at breakfast at our, you know, five-course meal. And we're sitting there, and the, the trembling that was going on inside us, waiting for her to tell us that she knew. Had to be the same feeling, but 20 times worse that Peter felt every time Jesus showed up. And I'll just stop and thank the Lord for Robin's mom because she decided to not tell my mom. I don't know if my mom knows. Mom, if you're listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> Love you. But she decided not to tell my mom, and she gave us the worst punishment. She said, well, girls, I'm going to have to punish you. I was like, I will take, if you're not calling my mother, I will literally do whatever you have for me. She said, you have to clean up the kitchen and wash the dishes. Done. <laughs> Done. I will clean your toilets. I will do it all. You ain't telling my mama. It's all good because I'm living. Right? But that had to be what Peter was feeling. Then after all of this, he keeps seeing Jesus. Then he was a typical man. You know what he said? He goes, you know what? I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. He gets out on the boat. Then Jesus shows up again. This time, Peter had to finally be in a place where he just couldn't take it anymore. Jesus said, cast your nets out. He filled their nets with fish. And then it says that Peter jumped in the water and swam to Jesus. He didn't even wait for the boat to get to shore. He just, you know, he was filled with such angst and anxiety and worry. He was doing his normal disciple things. He was showing up when Jesus was there. He was listening to Jesus. He was confirming all the things that Jesus has had. And then Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? We, there are some ladies in this building right now. I got four minutes and I'm going to get to this. Listen to me. There are some ladies in this building right now. You need to be restored. There is such a disconnect. You don't even feel worthy to be in his presence. And he simply says, all you have to do is repent. That's it. I will restore you. So whether or not you find yourself stuck in the blessing, stuck in the storm, or stuck in a disconnect, there's hope for you. Why? because he gave us a plan. Repent. Come to me. I will give you the rest that you need. I will give you the refreshing that you need. If you're in the middle of a storm and you feel overwhelmed, repent. Repent for not trusting his plan. Repent for not believing in his ability to provide and calm the storm. Remind yourself of all he has already done, and he will do it again. If you are in the middle of blessing and you know there is more he is asking you to do, but you just haven't taken that step because you're too comfortable with where you are at, repent for not obeying and listening to what he's telling you to do. And if you have been listening, but your step hasn't been given, be patient. Wait on him. 
Don't get ahead of your turn because you don't want to be stuck in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if you feel disconnect, I'm going to say it again. You're coming to church every Sunday. You're raising your hands in worship. Some of you are still teaching that Sunday school class. Some of you are still volunteering in the nursery and in the children's church and ushering and doing all the things. But in your heart, there is such a disconnect because you've said things, you've done things. You don't know how to get back out of it. You believe who he says he is, but you just don't think that you are worth being in his presence, that you are not enough. He says, repent. Repent. Come to me all who are weary and burdened. Come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Get yourself unstuck. And if you're not sure where you are in that whole scenario, ask God. He'll reveal it to you. He'll show you if you're stuck. When we started our church, God told us three years earlier to start our church. We went to a pastor that was at the church that we were already at, and they told us, oh, I think God means this. And we said, oh, okay. So we stopped, and we waited three years until God had to kick us out of where we were in order to move forward, because I would have never have left. And then even after we got kicked out, my husband couldn't say it. We were stuck. And then a friend of ours said, sometimes you gotta go back to the very thing God asked you to do and you didn't obey. What has he asked you to do and you didn't obey? Go back to that. And we knew exactly where we needed to go. And we started our church. It's going to be 16 years in June. And I'm telling you right now, we are small, but we are mighty, baby. We are seeing God move. We don't care about the numbers. We don't care. God is moving. God is doing things. God is turning people around. God has people come in there like an ER. They come in. We, we love on them. We welcome them. God heals them, and then they go, and they do the other things. It's not about sticking around at my church. It's about you fulfilling what God has called you to do. And if our church is the in-between place, so be it. Our people are not mine. That's a hard lesson for pastors to learn. It's hard when someone comes to you and says, we got to go. Huh? But they're not mine. Get unstuck. Don't be Kai in between the mattress and the footboard. Don't be the people that took Kai's turn. And don't be the person that's in the middle of church doing all the right things, but completely disconnected from his plan. Because he has a next for you. And it's hope <laughs> and it's a future. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are preparing our next. Father, reveal to us where we are stuck. Reveal to us where we need to be unstuck. I thank you, Father, that you are revealing, you are giving us revelation of where we are and what we need to do and where we need to go, what steps we need to take. But first and foremost, Father, we repent. We repent for not listening. We repent for the things we've said. We've repented for the things that we don't believe. We repent and we say today that we trust you in our next, even if it looks difficult and it's painful and it hurts. We trust you. Thank you, Jesus, for walking with me every single step of the way, no matter how hard it is. I thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen.
you'll just take a look at where you are now and where you feel has on here always come through for you. Oh, he's the same now as he was back then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. And God knows the things that you're going through. And he knows how you're hurting. And you see, he knows just how your heart has been broken in two. Oh, but he's the God of the stars, the sun and the seas. And he is your father. As he was there. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again.
Come on, Eric. You do it again. Oh, do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. stretch in. Right. Get everything set up for the next. Sing this with me. Say, Who am I that you are mindful of me? How you love me. It's amazing. Come on, sing this. Say, oh, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. He is God Almighty, Lord of glory. You have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. Oh, I am a 
friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Come on, one more time. You say, oh, I am a friend of God. And I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. He calls me friend. He calls me friend. Aren't you glad that he calls you friend? Amen. You may be seated. Uh, how many of you in the audience have ever listened to At the Table with Darlene? Well, a lot of you. Praise God. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I want to, a lot of you don't know this young man sitting here to my left. This is Chris Norman. Yeah. <laughs> and Chris uh, has been uh, a very moving force in an encouragement of at the table. Uh, this young man used to work with Joyce Meyer. And with her ministry for quite a while, and God just supernaturally put him and Jessica in our lives. And and when uh, I began to just talk to him about basically building a website, because he's an excellent builder of websites, and that's how we got to know each other. And and he just really has pushed me, because you know I have never wanted to be the face of anything, and that's God's truth. And he told me, he said, Darlene, he said, you have to be the face of WAW because God has called you to that. So he began to help and, and, and uh, help with the podcast and suggest that we have it. And so here, anyway, here we are. And so, Chris, I love you. I appreciate you and Jessica so much. It's been an honor. Uh, two and a half years, I think. Two and right? a half years, I think. 156 episodes. Is that how many? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. Well, throw up, if you don't care, uh, throw up that slide back there so everyone can see uh, what God is doing. I mean, I'm amazed at what God is doing. Uh, it might take just a moment. Oh, there we go. Okay, at the table. Can you believe that? 11,000 listens in the last 12 months from 36 different countries. I don't know how. I just know that God is faithful. He's just so faithful, you know. Uh, Chris, read them. Yeah. Oh, okay. I hope I can pronounce them all right. <laughs> Spain, Kenya, Bahamas, Russia, Chile, Georgia, the country and the state. Um, Armenia, the Maldives, Poland, Sweden, Senegal, I'm guessing. Singapore, Argentina, Uruguay, India, Philippines, New Zealand, Ir Iran, Tanzania, South Africa, Peru, Brazil, Donovan Republic, Canada, Syrian Arabian Republic, Egypt, Trinidad and Tobago, Jordan, Germany, Czech Republic, Israel, Jamaica, Saudi Arabia, I don't even know that one, El Salvador, yeah, Belgium, Switzerland, Ukraine, Mexico, um, the UK, Nigeria, Finland, Australia, Ireland, Greece, France, Benin, Benin, America, of course, and Ghana. We just say, wow, you know, God, wow, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. But we just want to, this, I mean, what an honor to have. Didn't you just enjoy the sweetheart? I mean, my goodness, she's so sweet, so precious. You, you're just beautiful inside and out. We, uh, like I said, we met five minutes until they drove here to the church. And uh, we felt like we've known them forever. And Ilya, what a handsome young man you are. And so sweet. And we've been making jokes about having Russians sleeping in our house. Oh, the Russians, they're at the house. You're way taller than you are on Facebook, too. <laughs> yeah, way taller. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But so precious, so sweet, and we just love them dearly. Uh, God connections. Uh, so I, uh, we're going to ask you a few questions, and uh, we're watching the clock because our caters, we don't, we don't want them to quit. We want them to stick with us, right? 
so we, but we have time, and, and, but we want to ask a few questions and, and all. But first of all, uh, I want you, when we met, it was so brief, what were your thoughts? Tell me a little bit about your chatter and why you waited to talk to me. So um, I'm embarrassed to say that we were late to the conference that Pastor Daryl and Darlene did. It was a Saturday and we overslept and we were late by like two hours. So I think it was four sermons that morning, but we missed the first two. And I out of <laughs> we got the best ones, yes, <laughs> out of uh, a sense of guilt. I'm like, Ilya, let's go to this conference. We were in Armenia. Uh, this was the time when we couldn't go back to Russia. We were waiting for visas for Israel. So we were attending the church of Pastor Raphael where uh, Pastor Daryl and Darlene uh, would speak. And they've known each other for a long time. Well, we were there just for a month or two. So we decided to go and... We were shocked that it was Americans speaking because we understand English and it was so refreshing to hear the sermons. And um, I, out of just uh, courtesy, wanted just to introduce myself, say my name, and just thank Pastor Daryl and Darlene for the sermon. And um, Pastor Daryl was, um, they asked him to go up quickly, so I didn't have a chance to speak to Pastor Daryl. He was ready with the pastors, but it was. Darlene was right at the door, and I just walked up and said, hello, uh, my name is Jessica, and uh, just thank you for your sermon, and that's it. That's all I said, and we didn't realize how the connection would happen afterwards. Yeah, we were amazed that uh, you right away invited us to be part of your podcast. I'm like, wow, that's really neat. Well, we'll write, and we didn't know where it would take off from there. Amen. And by the way, Ilya has a good translator today also. Uh, Ilya, will you start and tell us a little bit about your journey when you left Russia and some of the different countries that you had to go through to get to where we met you? Can you tell a little bit about that? Я вырос в Новокузнецке, в России. I grew up in Novokuznetsk, Russia. Да, чтобы произнести этот название этого города, ты уже наполовину становишься новокузнечанином. To pronounce this city, you're already becoming uh, like a a person who already lives there. You have to be Russian to say. So if you could say Novokuznetsk with attitude, you're already Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Мы встретились с Джессикой в 12 лет, она уже говорила об этом. Uh, we we И всю жизнь мы в служении. We мы прошли, наверное, с каждую лестницу, начиная от гардероба. We, I, we the the ladder, the, the coats, <laughs> Гардероб это самое лучшее служение. <laughs> Ты можешь познакомиться со всеми в церкви. И тебя все могут полюбить. Да, два года, два года. Да. втором году, в феврале, да, в двадцать первом мы поженились. In July 2021, we got married. In February 2022, да, наступило такое, что произошла война между Россией и Украиной. It happened that the war started between Russia and Ukraine. Мы этого не ожидали, никто этого не ждал. Nobody expected it to happen. None of the Russians, no one expected this to happen. Да, мы хотим сказать, что большинство русских против этой войны. We would like to say that most Russians are against this war. Но ввиду того, что политики государства России, but the politics and the governments of Russia, а вся оппозиция либо мнение против войны, оно уже подавлено и люди находятся в страхе. All opposition to to the government or against the war has been suppressed and people are living in fear. Да, и мы просим вас молиться за Россию. И чтобы Бог смирил государство России. Yeah. Yeah. 
И как это отразилось на нас, так как я российский гражданин, Джессика американский гражданин. Citizen, Мы являемся частью канадской, ну, можешь рассказать. We're, we're part of um, the PAOC in Canada, kind of like the AG. I'm a Canadian citizen as well, so uh, my parents were part of the PAOC, and uh, that's what we're part of. Да, и 9 марта, спустя две недели войны, у нас был созвон. On March 9th, two weeks after the war started, we had a Zoom call. С нашим начальством в Канаде. With um, our superintendent, with our regional director from Canada. И он посоветовал нам выехать из страны. And he suggested that we leave the country. На тот момент мы думали, мы герои, мы останемся. We thought at that moment that we're heroes, we're gonna stay. Нам нужно продолжать служить. We gotta continue serving, we have to push through. Но когда мы созвонились, мы подумали, окей, мы будем послушны. But when we called, we had that Zoom call, we said, okay, we'll be obedient. Он посоветовал всего лишь на две недели выехать и посмотреть на ситуацию. Our, our regional director said to leave the country for two weeks and just weigh out the situation. Okay, мы, uh, у нас был созвон 9 -го. We called on March 9th. 10 мы упаковали один чемодан. March 10th, we packed one suitcase. И 11 у нас был, uh, 10 -го вечером у нас был перелет до Москвы, и 11 мы должны были из Москвы лететь в Казахстан. We were supposed to fly to Moscow on March 10th, and on March 11th we were supposed to fly from Moscow to Kazakhstan. По своей наивности мы взяли всего лишь один чемодан с них вещей. We were naive. We took one suitcase with all our winter clothes. My mom said to pack more. I should have listened to my mom. We... <laughs> so, but we only packed one suitcase. И что произошло, когда мы проходили паспортный контроль? Мы очень усиленно молились за меня. We were fervently praying for Потому что мы переживали, что меня не выпустят. Но меня очень легко пропустили. Но мы не молились за Джессику. Ее задержали. Можешь рассказать свою историю сейчас? So they put me in an isolated room for about 15 minutes. They took away my passport, my Russian residency status. There was nobody in the room. I was all by myself. And that morning, someone sent me a verse from Deuteronomy saying that God is before you, he's behind you, he's all around you. Don't be afraid or discouraged. I just kept rereading and rereading and rereading that scripture until the presence of God filled that little room. And I, I felt such peace. I knew that I was going to be questioned intensely, uh, but I, I knew that the Holy Spirit is going to help me answer the questions. So they, put, they bring me into a room, and there's two Russian FSB officers. It's um, KGB. Maybe you've heard of KGB. Same thing, but FSB. They just changed the letters. And <laughs> uh, they begin to question me very intensely about my life, my family, Uh, family members who live in the States, who live in Russia, why are we going to Kazakhstan? I knew I was being recorded on audio, on video, um, through paper, and one of the officers said, give me your phone. So I gave my phone, he said, open it. So right in front of my face, he starts going through all my social media, through my pictures, my emails, my WhatsApp, everything, all my messages, just seeing how I would react because he was going through private information, my personal information. I was very calm. I had nothing to hide. I have a lot of goofy pictures, and maybe he saw those. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I was praying, and I would say, can my husband come in? And they would say, no, we have to question you. And at the same time, my husband, мужская свою честь. Я оказался в такой ситуации абсолютной беспомощности. I was in complete helplessness. Я впервые попал в такую ситуацию, когда я ничего не могу сделать, чтобы помочь своей жене. И это была, наверное, самая усиленная молитва в моей жизни. Потому что все, что я мог делать, это молиться. Конечно, у меня в голове еще созрел один план. Я думал, если Джессику... Если Джессику бы уводили, 
if Jessica, if I saw Jessica being taken by the officers. I saw James Bond and I can. <laughs> Praise God, I didn't have to do that. <laughs> and I said, why am I being questioned? And they said, we don't have many Americans flying through Moscow, through Kazakhstan. And then I said, they gave me my passport back, and I got up, and I said, has anybody ever told you that God loves you? And their eyes were so big. I said, God loves you, and he wants to have a relationship with you. And they said, with me? I said, yes, with you. I said, it was nice talking to you. And I took my documents. I came to Ilya, and then I began to shake because I realized the intensity of what happened. There, I was very calm, very confident. But right after I left the room, I realized what happened. И через 10 минут у нас должен был быть вылет. И наш рейс отменили. Причина, по которой мы узнали, это была причина, связана со, страхо... со страховой... страховым случаем, то есть страховка. What happened was Kazakhstan closes borders to Russia because of the sanctions and insurance policies with the flights because SWIFT was shut off in Russia. Maybe you've heard that the banking system, everything was closed. И что произошло? Люди начали возмущаться. What happened? People started like shouting and there was chaos что, in the airport. Что с нашими билетами? What's with our tickets? What's going on? А у меня четкое понимание, нам нужно вылетать из страны. Потому что я никак не могу ее защитить. И я хватаю свою жену. Мы бежим обратно на паспортный контроль. Пока ну, весь самолет, весь народ не, тоже не рванул туда. На паспортном контроле у служащий паспортного контроля была иммиграционная карточка Джессики. И она давай очень медленно искать. Really я говорю, давайте я вам помогу. Я хватаю карточку, мы, card, мы, вызываем, мы вызываем такси, taxi, едем в другой аэропорт, the это два часа езды, car, и попутно мы пытаемся купить билеты до Армении. To to Armenia. To Armenia Но пока мы ехали, у нас ничего не получилось. Не we no американская карта, cards, европейская карта. И не российские наши карты. Сейчас мы понимаем, что Бог закрывал двери. Потому что у Бога была другая дверь. И мы приезжаем в следующий аэропорт, и что происходит, мы не знаем, что нам делать. И мы вспоминаем, что у Джессики есть страховка. И мы звоним в эту страховую компанию. And we call the insurance company. Можешь рассказать сейчас? And they reached back to us and they said, we could fly you to Dubai or Israel. Where would you like to go? And we said, well, we don't know anybody in Dubai. I have Uncle Peter in Israel. Let's go to Israel. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And our lives were changed. We... We got to the third airport. It was another two hours. So we were supposed to fly out at 10 a.m. It was already 11 p.m. that night. We couldn't get out of Russia. And we come, and the lady said, where are your PCR tests? And we had them. And... Они у меня были. Илья said, I had them. И я начинаю искать, я никак не могу найти ПЦР-тест. And we start looking, we can't find our PCR test to fly into Israel. И тут я очень-очень сильно занервничал. And I got really stressed out. And I, I told Ilya, I said, Ilya, let's pray. And he's like, no, you pray. <laughs> 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 
И мы нашли в онлайне, что есть uh, быстрые получения ПЦР-теста. We found that there's an express PCR test right at the airport, super expensive. И, Praise God, everything was covered. Um, и за 50 минут мы сделали. 50 minutes we did it, and 10 minutes before check-in was closed, we got through. Praise God. Yeah. That's kind of how you travel, right? <laughs> At that point, did you realize that Russia probably wasn't going to be an option to come back, or was that later on? На данный момент сейчас мы думаем, что пока мы не можем вернуться. Right now, looking at this situation, we realize we can't go at this moment. Именно тогда, когда мы вылетали. Честно говоря, мы даже не успели обсудить эту ситуацию, вернемся ли мы в Россию или нет. Honestly, when we were flying out, we didn't have even any time to discuss it. Will we come back or not? Everything was so fast. We were just running for our lives. Да. Сейчас мы понимаем, что пока Бог закрыл эту дверь для нас. We see that God has closed that door. И мы прошли, и мы прошли долгий процесс отпустить. And we were going through a long process of letting go. We were very involved in ministry back home in Russia. Потому что это это в первую очередь люди, которым мы служили. It was the people that we were serving, our friends, everyone was left behind. Это это наши мечты, стремления в служении. У нас были огромные планы и цели. It was our dreams and our goals in the ministry. We had big plans and uh, goals that we wanted to reach, our dreams, and everything was buried. I remember when we came to Israel, I felt like we were put on the, uh, put like bench warmers. We were in the game, and they put us on the bench. Thanks for, your, thanks for the game. We'll be good without you for now. И я помню, мы проходили этот процесс, когда мы учились заново понимать, что Бог смотрит на нас не только из-за нашего служения. And we were relearning that God looks at us not because of our ministry and what we do. Yeah. That's powerful. Потому That's что powerful. Бог забрал служение из нашей жизни, но Он не лишил нас нас. God took away the ministry from us, but He didn't take away us from ourselves. И мы учились по-другому принимать Божью любовь в нашей жизни. We started to receive God's love in a very different way in our lives. И это очень... Когда мы были в Израиле, у нас были слезы. When we were in Israel, we cried. Мы очень много разговаривали. We talked a lot. Мы молились. We prayed. Мы отпускали. We were letting go. И мы увидели нужду. And we saw a need. В Израиле очень много нужды. Israel has a huge need. Бог показал нам, что в Израиле Израиль это очень удивительная страна. Israel is an amazing country. Это микс всего. It's a mix of everything. Религий, religions, языков, languages, национальности, nationalities. И есть там недостигнутая народность. And there's an unreached people group in Israel. Миллион двести человек. There's a one million two hundred thousand people. Это русскоговорящие люди. And they're all Russian-speaking people. Которые переехали из Советского Союза тридцать лет назад. Who came from the Soviet Union thirty years ago to Israel? Их никто не достигает. Nobody's reaching them. Они живут своими группами. They live in their own groupies. У них у них свои русские магазины. They have their Russian stores. They're open on Shabbat. Everything else is closed. They they um these are precious people and many Holocaust survivors speak Russian, and we've been able to become friends with them and. Um, a lot of people who immigrated from the Soviet Union, when my dad immigrated to Canada, many immigrated to Israel because the doors were opened. And now that the war has happened, it's been the biggest exodus from the north mm -hmm. into Israel, like the prophecies have been yeah. filling right in front of our eyes. And it's yeah. people like us who've lost everything who are in Israel in the same boat as we are, like that. Now, you went to Israel, but then you had to leave, right? Tell us a little bit about that. So how long were you in Israel when you got there the first time? When you were sitting on the bench? Uh, 
Окей. Мы были в Израиле три месяца. We were in Israel for three months the first time we arrived. Это туристическая виза. It was a tourist visa. Просто так жить в Израиле достаточно сложно. To live in Israel with is very difficult. То есть нужно получать документы, то есть это либо виза, либо гражданство. You have to either get citizenship or another type of visa, a long-term visa. У нас нет никаких подтверждающих документов, что мы евреи. Мы думаем, что, возможно, где-то у нас есть корни. Также мы думаем, что я потом Голиаф. Но вряд ли это мне как-то поможет. Итак, мы были три месяца в Израиле. We were three months in Israel. Мы познакомились со служением там. We got to know a ministry there. И в течение трех месяцев я получил визу в Америку. Uh, within three months I got a visa to the States. Uh, в Иерусалиме. In Jerusalem. It's only one embassy in Jerusalem. On top of the hill is the U.S. embassy. Uh, Trump. The Trump shall sound. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Amen. После чего мы поехали в Америку, в Иорданию. So our visa in Israel was ending, and our visa to the States didn't start yet. So we had to hang out for somewhere for two weeks. So we went to Jordan, uh, to the neighboring country. Jordan and Israel have a good relationship right now. So we were in Jordan for two weeks. Да, мы пережили там небольшой стресс. We experienced big stress in Jordan. Потому что это совершенно тоже другая страна. It's a very different country, very different culture. Да, и Джессике приходилось uh, носить длинную одежду. I had to, I personally had to wear like long clothes, no shorts, jeans to be respectful of the, all the Muslim women. I but, didn't wear a hijab, but I looked very different. Everybody, uh, even babies' jaws dropped in the car when they saw me. <laughs> Uh, because there are not many blonde people in Jordan. <laughs> right. И после мы полетели в Америку. Afterwards we flew to the States. Причина, потому что у Джессики младшего брата была свадьба. My younger brother got married in Virginia, and we started the process of the visa application for Israel, the long-term visa. Да, нужно было получить документы Джессики в Америке. I had to get my background checks and all my documentation in the States. И после чего мы полетели в Казахстан. We flew to И там в Казахстане была свадьба у старшего брата Джейски. My younger brother got married in the States. My older brother got married in Kazakhstan several months later. It was two weddings back to back. My poor parents. <laughs> um, Почему у него в Казахстане? Потому что у него жена тоже из the, России. The reason why my older brother got married in Kazakhstan is because the war started, but and his wife was Russian. So it was the neutral ground for Russians and Americans to come and do a wedding in Kazakhstan. The second reason why we came to Kazakhstan is because Ilya's mother came to Kazakhstan to the wedding. For me to get a visa to Israel, I had to go back to Russia to get my documents for the visa application. Мы приняли решение, что мы не будем такой, такой вариант не рассматривается, что я вернусь в Россию. И мы оформили всю юридическую доверенность на мою маму. And we gave my mother power of attorney to do my, get my documents on my behalf. <laughs> Моя мама как горец, <laughs> шпион. <laughs> my mom is a special agent. <laughs> Она поехала и получила все документы. В Казахстане мы были 30 дней. In Kazakhstan, we were 30 days. Потому что мы узнали, что я могу находиться 90 дней, а Джессика всего 30. We realized that Ilya, as a Russian citizen, can be in Kazakhstan for 90 days, but Jessica, as an American citizen, only 30 days. И нам пришлось переехать в Кыргызстан на 3-4 дня и вернуться обратно. So 
И после чего мы должны были полететь в Армению. And then we were supposed to go to Armenia because Armenia allowed both of us for six months without a visa. Слава Богу за Армению. Praise God for Armenia. <laughs> yes, amen. That's where we met you was at, in Armenia. That's where we met. Yes, in Armenia. We didn't know what would be in Armenia. Tell us a little bit. We have a few more minutes, but tell us a little bit while you were at Armenia, how God began to use you. What would you tell people? Because I, this is such a beautiful part of the story that everywhere they went, they looked for someone to tell Jesus, tell about Jesus. They did. They used the opportunities. And so many of us think that I, I have nothing. I don't know how to talk to someone. But you may be changing their lives. And everywhere that they went, they figured out how to minister the word of God. And so tell us a little bit about the six months that you were in Armenia and, and how you opened conversations. Хорошо. В Армении мы, когда мы прилетели, когда мы вылетали еще только в Армению, we Armenia, это было после того, когда Путин объявил о мобилизации. It was right after Putin announced the nationwide mobilization. И очень тысячи молодых парней вылетали из страны. Thousands of young men were escaping the country by foot, by car, and by plane. К примеру, наш самолет из Казахстана в Армению. For example, our plane from Kazakhstan to Armenia. Он как в нем находилось 10 женщин, а остальные все молодые парни возраста 25-45 лет. There was about 10 women on the flight, and the rest were all young guys, 25 through 45, on the flight. И когда мы прилетели в Армению, when we came to Armenia, у нас были друзья, знакомые в городе Ванадзор. We had friends in Vanadzor. Um, who suggested that we go there. Да, нам помогли там снять квартиру. They helped us find an apartment. И я помню, на первый, мы в первый день пошли прогуляться по городу. I remember we went for a walk outside in Vanazor, Armenia. И мы начали увидеть столько молодых парней, молодежи и даже девушек русскоговорящих, русских. And we started to notice that among the Armenians there were so many Russian people who escaped Russia our age. So many. И мы просто на улице начинали с ними здороваться. And we would just say hello to them in Russian and start talking to them. Спрашивали, откуда они? We would ask, where are they from? Когда они сюда прилетели? When did they come to Armenia? Что у них происходит сейчас в жизни? What's happening in their lives now? И мы увидели, что они уже до нас, до нашего прибытия, они уже еженедельно начали собираться в ресторане. And we found out that they started getting together on a weekly basis in this restaurant on Friday nights, even before we arrived there. Каждую неделю по пятницам минимум 30 человек собирались в ресторане. A minimum of 30 people would come to this restaurant. It was all Russian speaking. They had their own home group, even though they were not safe. <laughs> They, they would get together for fellowship every Friday night. And we just started coming there. We started talking to them. Started sharing our story. They started sharing their stories with us. And then on a different day we suggested, would you like to play games? Um, mafia. We started playing mafia with a bunch of Russians in Armenia. И мы строили с ними отношения. We started building relationships with these people. И мы молились, как мы можем донести до них Евангелие. We were praying, how can we share the gospel with these precious people? Потому что для нас было понимание, мы мы понимали, мы здесь не останемся. We were we we had the realization that we're not here for very long. We're going to leave Armenia soon. И большинство из этих молодых людей тоже не останутся здесь. And most of these people are not going to stay in Armenia. They're going to go elsewhere. Armenia is just a transition point for them. Пока мы находились в Армении, очень многие молодые ребята уже улетали в Россию. Some either returned, many returned back to Russia because of taxes and it became very difficult for them to work outside the country. And some 
moved further away from Russia. It was a mix. И мы старались с ним перед их отъездом а, с ними встречаться и молиться за них и проповедовали им Евангелие. Before they would leave. Armenia would meet with them one on one and share the gospel with them and pray with them that God would protect them. Да, мы старались. Когда мы еще были в России, у нас был такое служение, был такой принцип. In in Russia, when we were still living in Russia, we had this um, value or idea. Так как а, мы в большинстве своем случае работали с молодыми людьми. Since we worked with many young people, that was our primary ministry, youth ministry in Russia. Мы пытались сначала заслужить их доверие. We tried to earn their trust first. И после этого, когда они у нас будут доверительные отношения, когда они нам доверяют. And once they trust us, мы говорили им что-то в их жизни. We would speak into their lives. Yeah. И когда мы построили отношения в Армении с, с этими людьми в России, из России, and when we built these relationships with these people from Russia in Armenia, and they were very secular, a lot of atheists, IT people, very smart, successful people who were vulnerable at that time because they left their homes right in Armenia. После того, мы, в это время мы получили уже наши визы в Израиль. During our relationships with them, we got the confirmation that our visas to Israel were approved. И у нас появилась идея. And we had an idea. Мы запланировали сделать а, как бы последний прощальный вечер. We decided to do a goodbye party for, uh, so that they would say goodbye to us. And, um, <laughs> И мы знали, что в, в России есть такая как традиция всегда говорить тост. And in Russia, there's this tradition where you say a toast. Мы, конечно, не пили. We didn't drink any alcohol. They noticed that we didn't drink any alcohol and we didn't smoke. It... And every time we would meet, because they were all smoking, some smoked, um, they vaped, they smoked, they drank, and they noticed we didn't do that. And um, we would come home smelly, and I'd say, you have to go for a shower. <laughs> and, um, but it was a sacrifice. I remember going there, and I would feel physically tired because of all the smoke. I would feel tired. And, but we were building that relationship. Yes. We were influencing them. Jesus was with the outcasts. Jesus was yes. with the unbeliever. Yes. He was with them. Yes. But he was not being influenced by them. He was influencing them. And yes. that's how we felt. It was tiring. It was very hard. It's a lot easier to be around Christians yeah. than around those who are not saved. Uh -huh. on One now. guy even said, I think your faith is stupid. And we laughed together, all of us together. We thought, And we're like, yeah, we agree. You know, it's not... It's, You, you have to have a lot of faith. And I said, I think you have more faith not to have faith than we have faith to have faith. And it took him back. And then he would give us the biggest hug, this guy. He would hug us every time. He was so excited to see us. Even though he said those things, he just wanted to see our reaction. That's the type of people that we would minister to. Try to be their friend. I remember we prayed, what should we say to these guys? And we were praying what to say to all of them because we never spoke publicly to all of them about our faith, just one-on-one -on -one to individuals. И мы верим то, что Иисус, когда Он говорил о проповеди Евангелия, Он говорил не только о спасении на небесах, что очень важно, но также Он говорил об исцелении, восстановлении здесь, на земле. We believe that when Jesus was on earth, He not only talked about eternal salvation in, in heaven, which is very important, it's the most important aspect, but he talked about restoration and healing here on earth. Yes. Yes. And all these young people were stripped of any sense of hope. Yes. Their whole lives were destroyed. They had no stability, no plans, lost a lot of finances, и мы молились, и мы подумали, мы, мы сделали им подарочки. И мы написали на этих подарочках из Исаи. Можешь процитировать. И мы сказали им о надежде. We to, we Потому что они, в принципе, большинство... Каждый из них слышал что-то о Боге. 
Each one of them heard something about God. Но они никогда не слышали об Иисусе, который хочет участвовать в их жизни. But they never heard about Jesus who wanted to take part in their lives. Кто понимает, через что они проходят. Who understands what they're going through. И который может дать им надежду. And who could give them hope чтобы им дойти до конца. Beautiful thing. They moved uh, 16 times in eight. Was it 16 times between eight countries in a year? You think your life gets disrupted right. with one suitcase? Yeah. And God multiplied it. We had six at the end of it. So. <laughs> See, that's how God does. Если вам нужны советы, как упаковать ваш чемодан, я для вас проведу мастер-класс. Yeah. Uh, hey, pastor is saying my wife needs to be in that workshop. <laughs> Does your wife need to be there too? <laughs> But I, I know you've enjoyed this. Uh, we really, really don't, I don't know why. God does what he does. I just know that when we listen to him and, and their, their story is so, when you see how that God just kept moving them and they just kept trusting God and they used the opportunities and how much we cry and, and complain uh, when things don't go the way that we want them. And sometimes things have to get out of control before we really understand how powerful God is. And things that were so out of their control, they could do nothing about what their president was doing. Nothing that they could do about it. But they took the hope of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, every step that they took. And, and I'm going to ask, uh, as we get ready to, to close this session, uh, I'm going to ask Jessica to pray. And by the way, you have a wonderful translator. I hope you know that. Thank you. And Ilya, he, he understands most of everything we say. He, he does really good. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> just such a wonderful, precious young man. And we just love you so much and so thankful that you're here. Thank you for coming. And, you know, you just kind of blindly come here. Not really, though. I, I could tell from the beginning that there was an excitement. I don't know what God's doing, but we said yes. yes. And, and so it's so, so great. But uh, there are others that are going to listen to the podcast, and, and it will be up Sunday evening. And so you know somebody, ask them to listen to the podcast and, and to pray for this couple uh, because God's going to open doors, so many doors for them. Uh, divine connections. We're going to hear about this young couple because God's got his hand on them and we get to be part of it. You know, when God connects dots, you know, uh, WW is going to support them. I haven't told them that we're going to until this moment, but we're going to support them. So Solid, Rock. Solid Rock is going to support them <laughs> because I believe in what God is doing in and through them. And, and so how exciting that God would let us come, have you, and you come to this place. We're so thankful. But I want you to pray over our audience, not just this audience, but the audience that's going to be listen, Jessica, that God would so move them to listen when opportunities come up. To share Jesus. They don't have to have a platform. They just have to be a friend. And God will give them opportunities. Even when you're being interrogated. And the enemy meant to intimidate you. Yeah. And she was strong in the Lord. Didn't. She didn't shake. 
right on row while she was in there. She didn't cry. She didn't give in. Afterwards, her husband comforted her, but she stood strong, and she was able to tell these uh, interrogators that Jesus is real and he loves them. So would you pray? For all of those that keep making excuses, that they will no longer make excuses, but they'll look for opportunity to share Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for new friends, for our precious friends. For Pastor Daryl and Darlene, for Chris and his family, for all the people here and who are listening right now. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you would encourage them and give them an excitement yes to see souls saved that's the greatest joy that any person yes. could experience is that when you yes. move through our lives and you touch other lives yes. i pray for boldness yes. in the name of jesus that all fear would be gone satan we bind all lies and all fear in the name of Jesus and all attempts that failed yes. Lord that didn't work out when we wanted to say something that or we were quiet or we were laughed at Lord I pray that you would heal those moments yes. and give a new inspiration a new yes. encouragement a new fire to just say to someone God loves you or to even have the gift of prophecy which is the mm -hmm. gift of encouragement to yes. speak into the lives yes. of people that they connect with Lord that you don't need to be a pastor or an evangelist yes. to share the good news. Yes. I pray yes. that each person here in their own creative way would share the good news, whether it be through a cup of coffee, through an Instagram story, or through a Facebook post, or through a YouTube video, Lord, or just sending a link to someone. God, I pray that each person here, you would just right now yes. give creative ideas, or through the gift of hospitality, that they would invite people to their home and feed them, or, or mm -hmm. do games. Uh, play games with young people Lord yes. that you would give right now ideas and give each woman each man the courage to just write it down and do it Lord that they would not pull time that you would provide the place you would provide the resources you would provide the people and you would provide them with the words to say when they open their mouth yes. that they would not to try to plan ahead how to say it or what to say but Holy Spirit that they would trust you and that they will say it the way you want them to say it. And that yes. you are good and you're kind. Yes. And you will use them for your glory, Lord. Yes. That it, in these last days that many souls in America yes. would be saved, Lord. That you would give your church courage yes. to speak with boldness the truth with love. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for each person and for their desire. You see their desire to share the good news. Yes. I pray that this desire would be equipped with courage and boldness, Lord. Bless them and encourage them, strengthen them, and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Until the next time, at the table with Darlene, may the peace of God rule and reign in your lives. Shalom. Praise God. We don't have time. It's time for lunch, so we're going to pray here in just a moment. I, I want to mention just a couple of things to you. Uh, we will go out like we did last night. I they, they will be back. And someone will be back there to show you where to go. And uh, I don't have one of my girls up here right now to tell me. Ex Where's Chris? Do you know? Christy can't even talk. Do you know any of the details, or, or there'll be somebody back there just to help them? The Going to the left one. Okay. Thank you for an interpreter back there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to tell you, we're going to pray over the food, but uh, I just wanted to tell you that our, our lunch time, we're coming back in at, uh, you, you have time to do some eating and shopping. And we would encourage you to do that. Every product that is that you buy, it is going into ministry. And so uh, we would enjoy yourself doing that. The coffee shop will be also open also, I believe. 
uh, in the photo booth. Yes, you want to go get some photos. Della, thank you. I love you so much. I, I mean, every year, what a delight you are. Ten years he's been doing photography for us. Just such a precious man of God. I just love you dearly, 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 dearly. And uh, you and your family, your family's so beautiful. Love you. Uh, but we're glad that he's here. So go get some photos taken because, and he will be here after our last service. Now here real quickly, uh, I just want to say to you that, uh, of course, we're going to do drawings when we come up back. Of course we are. And then we're, uh, and we ask you to ask the Lord what he would have you to give in the WAW offering. Uh, we're going to be receiving that after lunch. And then we're going to be having praise and worship. And then we're going to have an anointing service. Anyone that there's not any power in me or pastor or any of our leaders, but we are going to anoint you with all. And believe that what has been imparted into this conference, you're going to take it home with you. So if you want to be part of that service, uh, please uh, hang around. Somebody said, what time will you get out? Well, we start back at 2.15. And uh, I won't tell you that we'll be out at 3 or 3.30 or 4. But I would encourage you to stay around as long as you can when you feel like you need to go. We understand. But... Anyway, there's a lot of good going on after lunch. So let's pray. Yes, Pastor. Pastor? What? Oh, Ilya, you're going to pray over the lunch. In English. English. In English. Come on now. You can do this. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can try, but... <laughs> you got this. Okay. Uh, hello, with power. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> you pray however you want to, Ilya. No pressure. Uh, we want to say thank you, thank you for your, for your pre presence, yeah, and thank you for your support. We we are so glad uh, to be here, and we are so glad to have new friends yeah and blessed our food blessed uh, our friends who did it this food amen, amen. Yeah. Woo! Great job. thank you thank you <laughs> go eat lunch